guys, welcome once again. This is the uh, Raj Call podcast. And I've got a very special guest today. Uh, probably, I'm actually, out of all the guests, even though I've, I've interviewed some uh, great musicians, I think I'm looking forward to this one the most because uh, I've, I've got a uh, rapport with him. So, and he's a great, great guy. He mixes my music. Uh, not only that, he's he's, a, he's one of the nicest guys in in the industry without fail. Um, so I've already introduced, I've already said him. I'm on DJ Reminis. Introduce yourself. Go for it. <laughs> uh, first of all, bro, I'm with it. You know, tere saare se urta nu. You know, pya parisa sri kal. So yeah, I'm I'm on the Panessa AK DJ Reminis. Um, just a normal guy, bro. Been in the scene a long time. Done everything. Played everything. Been through a lot and just sharing my experiences with the world. So, you know, absolutely just, amazing. Okay. So, I'm gonna make a start. Let's 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 do like a story because I don't know uh, a lot about uh, there's a lot about your background, which, um, yeah, I'm not aware of. So, I thought let's take this opportunity to find that out as well before we uh, diverse and 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 sure. get into um, uh, 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 Sugar <laughs> Gala, Gala, yeah. 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 So yeah. Uh, so so, where about you from originally? Because because I know you got links so, to UK. Yeah, it's a weird one, bro. So I'm I'm born in I'm Canadian. I'm born and raised in Canada, but uh, mom and dad are from the UK, and they settled in Canada. But when I was born, like they didn't know what they wanted to do. They're still attached to the UK. So on multiple occasions, we've tried to move back. And for some reason, we just ended up coming back to Canada. And then even myself, uh, before I graduated, I had moved to the UK. Mm -hmm. I've done, bro, I've done like preschool here, preschool there in the UK, high school here, high school there, middle school there, middle school there. Like it was weird. So um, I just, I just ended up being back in Canada for whatever reason. I tried to sell in the UK, spent half my life there. Mm -hmm. uh, I consider myself like, you know, one of those, I consider myself like when I go back home, it's like being home. So yeah. like, you know, when I go back to the UK, yeah, so yeah, yeah. Family. all my non care there, I have no family in Canada. So, um, they're like my homies and, you know, I got, I got, I got married in England cause that's what I wanted to do. So like the heart still there yep. in the UK, but you know, I, I think for me personally, staying in canada was the better move for me and my family yeah so, especially now in terms of the music industry canada is the the hub right now yeah isn't it? yeah i mean it took a long time to get here but yeah you know, it's good yeah i should move yeah. out there i should move out can come kind yeah you? bro I don't <laughs> think, yeah. Really like there. yeah exactly so, man. yeah no it was just it's just it was it was good i you know i don't i don't no regrets you know, I do this days like when I see you on stage and stuff, it's like, man, I wish I was in England. You yeah. know, because I do, I do miss, I do miss the, the, it's a lively music scene. Yeah. Kind of like, like you've got your own sort of thing, like India, Hale Ote, you know, Melimune Lagdea, right? Yeah. You can be like there. It is, it's, 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 they do, but, it, but they don't. It's different. It's weird. Plus, Canada's widespread. So you got Vancouver, which is popping, and then you got Toronto, which is like, you know, six hour flight so it's not like in england where you could go like you know south hub midla next weekend you go to birmingham midla yep yep and then midla so it's, it's it's nice like you got a really cool yeah. circuit you know i think the furthest we've done is um like the furthest i did was birmingham to uh edinburgh man Aberdeen okay. and stuff that was that was yeah Aberdeen, I, remember, Midland. I remember your uh yeah. I remember your social media on that one dude man we had to add uh, uh, that that day right when I uh, we had that gig, so I was off to Edinburgh. No, I had off to Edinburgh and um, was it Ab Aberdeen, I think Ad Aberdeen, Aberdeen, Midlands like was yeah. So on that day, my mummy passed away. Oh man, sorry. Yeah, yeah so I had to stop. I was gonna go Chester first. My mummy was still stopping in Chester, and that's near Liverpool. And um, um, so I was gonna go there and stop there. Just or die, you know, just pay my, just just see my mummy, see my cousin and stuff. But then in the morning find out she passed away so i still went there yeah you know paid my respects that time and it was and then had to drive straight to things so that she only took 12 hours bro that's mad yeah yeah you know it's funny you bring up the point i know we'll talk about this but the stuff that artists that people don't know what we have to do 
I've been in a situation like that too, where I had a New Year's gig and my Baba passed away. My. But you have like you know what I mean. You kind of yep yep. What do you do? I mean, there's no there's no right decision per se. No, depending no. on who you talk to. Yep. So you know, and this is stuff that people don't realize. Like I see, did not you know we're humans as well, right? We have exactly we have yeah. these conflicts, you know. But then we've got contracts. Then you've got you know the human side of it. It's it's tough. Yeah. You know, yeah. there's no right answer. I'm sure you got yeah. beat up for that. You yeah. know what I mean? And, but you know, at the same time, I, I think my family was all right. They were they were understanding about it because yeah. they knew that I, I had an agreement with someone and to yeah. go in at that far and cancelling last. <laughs> it'd be the last minute, wouldn't it? Cancel so, yeah, it was all right. But anyway, I was just talking about the the, the circuit uh, here. Um, you'll have to educate me on on the geography in uh, of uh, Canada because I'm I'm a yeah. bit ignorant that way so so yes so the the <coughs> excuse me the two main i would say center of punjabi music here is vancouver mm -hmm. and toronto and out of the two i would cold hardly say toronto is the bigger the bigger piece of the pie mm. when it comes to live gigs club gigs and whatever um it's so where's brampton, is, brampton is, yeah is brampton yeah. in toronto Brampton's in Toronto, Ontario. Okay, all right, because yeah, that's so, the main. And, and that's all you hear about. Like, yeah, and then obviously it BC the way started. They passed. We got Surrey, right? Surrey is the biggest yeah, population yeah. of Punjabi. So yeah, um, it's good. It's good. Lively scene. I, I, to be honest, over the years I've seen it become sort of like less and less Pundia, but it's not like I remember. You know, growing up, they're like a like. I would say starting from April all the way to summer, Koshna Kosh Hundasi, like, you know, Gatinya yeah. Baba Wala Mela, this Mela, Folk Fest. And then we we did our own festivals, like when I was involved with like, you know, um uh VIBC, right? I did, you know, the radio stations here, Igdo Sige Jalom at the time, they would do their own festivals. So mm -hmm. I mean it was vibrant. I'm not saying it isn't now. I maybe because I'm older, but it's it's just different now. Um mm. Club scene was, I would say, it was, it wasn't really big here. There wasn't a big scene. We did uh once a month, the last Thursday of the month for ten years. Like we were the longest running Punjabi sort of. That's night. pretty cool, man. Yeah, but that was more of a like a club thing, you know. We yeah. didn't really bring artists to that. We didn't need to. And then now, you know, there's there's similar nights, but it's it's not like Toronto where. There's something going on like every weekend, hmm. you know what I mean, or something. So I don't, I don't know why that is. Honestly, I think it's more of a like West Coast, Sardin and up on the West Coast, more lazy fair. You know what I mean? We're we're a bit more, you know, it's not like a big city like London's, like you know, traffic and busy. Yeah, and you're yeah. On the go. That's what that's what the East Coast is like. <laughs> so we're more like barbecues and picnics and sort of chill. That sounds like me to be fair. Yeah. Barbecues, picnics, so. and. That sounds uh yeah. So um but that's I mean but Chalo can it which one day don't get me wrong, like Edmonton, yeah. Calgary. Just I mean we've we've done tours across Canada, so you know, just there's pop in areas, but our biggest problem is geography. Yeah. And but Punjabis are spread out all over the place. Yeah, yeah. But so those are the main two hubs. Vancouver. Yeah, I would say those are the main two hubs, yeah. Yeah. But now with I think in the next 10 years, you'll see a difference now because, like, we've had over a million Punjabis, like, well, I'll say, you know, people from India move over mm -hmm. in the last two years because of yeah. the immigration. So I think, but at the end of the day, Halevi, Oe, they moved to the big cities like Toronto and Vancouver. But mm -hmm. I think, like, ev like everything, when, you know, when too much of a thing happens, people tend to move out. Yep, yep, yep. So you're going to see... I I think you'll see a wider spread of Punjab. Like I moved four hours away now from Vancouver. Sorry, mm -hmm. I'm in an area called the Okanagan. Mm -hmm. I moved. Away. I moved here in 2018. I would, I would never see any Punjabis here in the area. Mm -hmm. Very few, right? I'll go to a Walmart or whatever. I didn't see them. Now it's like every day in my gym mm -hmm. every day. So, and you ask them, they're like, you know, you know, to see a They're like, yeah, to to Vancouver to. You know what I mean? <laughs> we we all do that, don't we? It's like it's like what happens is like you go to an area, yeah. first the Gordon move out, right? Yeah. Then then the Indians move out, and then another ethnicity yeah. moves out, and then slowly, yeah. slowly you just that's what happens. Yeah. It's, it's like the evolution of a 
yeah, of, yeah. it's just natural internal migration yeah. right yeah yeah so uh um, like, like in, in terms of um uh the middle i wanted to mention mention the the thing that kick started it here again was covid okay after covid there was a midline every you throw a stone there's a middle <laughs> yeah and that that yeah. really changed oh. the scene but it's it started to die down again. Like I, I've had Miller, which have, which have been cancelled all of a sudden. There was going to be a Levington Miller. There was going to be this Miller, and, and they they just got they were just cancelled. I don't think we've ever had this in the like the year I did the Miller last year. Was it last year? I, I did a lot of Miller. I don't think we've ever had this much Miller in, in the UK. Wow. Yeah. People were just trying to cash in, I guess. Yeah, cash in, and you know just. Uh, post lockdown, there were, you know, yeah. like Aberdeen Miller, there was Aberdeen Miller, Slough Miller, Hanslow Miller, uh, Birmingham Miller. Two, there's two Birmingham Miller. There's Big John's Birmingham Miller. Yeah, then yeah, yeah. A, that one. That, then one. there's a, the Samuel one. They they sort of um, target slightly different communities where the um, uh, the the Sanwell Birmingham Miller that that targets more like a Punjabi Indian Punjabi sort of thing. Huh? And, and it's more desi, whereas the big John's ones, that's more like uh, to the Pakistani crowd. Okay, fair enough. Yeah, fair which which is so that's normally around Eid time. Okay, and and it's and it's pretty big to be fair. Big John's, if you can get on Big John's, it's a massive, massive, massive day job. But those are the two m- main ones in Birmingham. Then you've also got the uh, you've also got the um, uh, you got loads in London. You got Reading. Miller, yeah. you got there's so so many, it's, just, it's unbelievable. Newcastle, Miller, and there's all the, the then there's up, the, up north, Newcastle, uh, uh, Berry, um, Huddersfield, Miller. I forgot how many we done last year, it's crazy, yeah, yeah, yeah that, that's what I'm saying. I remember that was probably like highlights of my youth there, bro, attending these Miller and the daytimers and stuff, yeah. and like musically rooted, like. Uh, like I wouldn't if it wasn't for UK Punjabi music and the scene I would never play I would never I would, I wouldn't be Punjabi mm. now, I'll be honest with you I wouldn't know the language mm. I wouldn't play the music it's it was the UK Punjabi specific like culture of music that is so art. true bro that is so cause I, I I don't know whether you know I grew up amongst I'm supposed to be interviewing you in it. I'm just telling you about my life. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> so I grew up with amongst the bands, you see, because like yeah. um a lot of my cousins and relatives and stuff like that, they were they were in the bands. So yeah. you had Dave Dolly, who's 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 like uh, his his grandparents and my 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 Narnike, they all came to from India at the same time. So they all they all lived in Aston. Do you know you know Aston, don't you? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. So all these, all these like band members, a lot of them lived in Aston or Hansworth. Yeah. So all all all, all Anarnike and grandparents, they all know each other. Like e- even now, I think we've got relatives in places where you know we don't know who they are. <laughs> you know what I mean? So, but they all came that day, and then so we knew the band members uh, of of like Excellency. Um, uh, Suffrey Boys and this, you know, you had someone, and yeah, you know, my cousin Suki, he's he's he, Arnke was in as well. So yeah, so it, it's it was a. Uh, I think I think you're so right that we learned Punjabi through music. Yeah, I, I did. Know. I admit yeah. it. They were like our yeah. superstars, bro. Like yeah. I remember, I remember, I remember that one year I came back to England, and it was the first time I actually got to meet Serge Sota. He was playing, and this, and bro, this is at a wedding. Just think, this ain't no concert, you know. No, no. And I'm like fanboying over this guy. Obi Bajara. It was a funny thing because, you know, I don't know if anyone's heard the story, but they, I think they got into some sort of accident, a car accident. So Bajara, he's in a wheelchair, all bandaged up, man. and he's singing, and here's me going, "Hey, man, can I have your autograph?" He's looking at me like, "Bro, like." <laughs> 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 that was oh, a good gosh. time, man. We used to we used to have this um video shop uh called Hi Fi on Soho Road. Do you remember it? Okay, yeah, yeah, I remember Hi Fi. Yeah, yeah. yeah, and May yeah. used to own it. There's the uh, yeah, yeah. Gujarati owners. May was a really good guy, and I remember when I was about eleven, twelve. I had my first signed tape from a Jonic. A Jonic was no signed. Way. Tapes. That's yeah, cool, man. yeah. V- VJ was signing him, so wow. it was like it was crazy yeah. days, man. Yeah, you'll never get them back. No, man, and you know. You know, we've talked about this before. Like, it's just, it's a part of that culture that 
you know, I'm afraid it's just going to get lost in translation somewhere because we never did a very good job of, you know, documenting it. I know, yeah. I know, you know, like you guys are trying and yeah, you're doing what you can do, which is fantastic. Like this podcast is important. This is going to be recorded. Whoever you put on this is there for life on digital format. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> so it's fantastic, man. I give you props. Like I've been trying, I've been wanting to do this, this sort of idea for, you know, forever, like just yeah. to get the greats on and just, just talk about life and music. Yeah. But you know, guess what we should do one to together. I mean, you know, we should yeah, do one together one day. Yeah, it? I'd love to do one together. Get a guest on where we both, uh, Grill the guest. <laughs> or any apology, I'll give they know why I'm on the show. <laughs> yeah, at least we've got each other anyway. So <laughs> I had I had um the one before this. I don't know whether I told you who I've got. So this is uh a, a f- recorded a few few a few weeks in advance. Okay. So Mukhtar Zahot is gonna be the one I'm coming out. Yeah, you were mentioning it to me. That's gonna yeah. be cool, man. man. These guys, listen, like you hear like this whole Taz, like they're so elusive. Yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? Like you don't know, like I don't know anything about them unless, like, unless you're kind of like in the inside circle. Yeah. I know, you know what I mean. Like I just yeah, spent yeah. gig Seattle with them. Jesse obviously is my homeboy, right? So like you, you kind of know, but with them, they're like, you know what I mean. So I'm looking yeah. forward to that. So yeah, uh, uh, um, um, he was uh, Mukhtar was. Um, he said that when he's doing music, he locks off. Yeah. Okay. Like I think it took us months to get to, to get this, and we uh, we were speaking to his manager. His wife manages him, so yeah. uh, same as me. So uh, it was our wives who linked up, and that's how the podcast came to came to be with Mukhtar. Wow, man! But, See, that's how things get done. Ruby, man. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, them, <laughs> let the wives do it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so uh, uh, yeah, but his his podcast. Uh, when you listen to it, it, it it's uh, obviously I had to. Uh, I was a bit nervous to that that one, to be fair, because. No one's interviewed Mukhtar. I don't, don't. I don't think there's no interviews on it. Yeah, you know what I mean. Like it's one of those things. Okay. Uh, yeah, and not only that, he's such an accomplished musician. You're thinking, man, I better know what. Class, bro. Exactly, class. I better know what I'm talking about. And it is. So... <laughs> you know, he he say what you want. Like there was that era, and I like I don't want to irritate people. There's but there's that era at one point where UK Punjabi music all started to sound the same. Yeah. It yeah. was that time period, right? Yeah. But no matter no matter where you are, if you hear his music, it's distinct. He's like that only one, yeah. you know, where you know like the keys that he plays, like the sound design, you're like, that's him. Yeah. You know? Yeah. That's you'll cool. learn that's how he cool. like in the podcast, when you listen to it, you'll learn about how he um he differentiated from the because he did because when he when he went solo he wanted to differentiate from the Sahota sound. Okay, yeah. So he yeah. talks about that. He tried to make the sound as the the songs as varied as possible. Yeah. So it was really interesting the way he did that, and he talked about the 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 the, the, the things about it. Uh, the um, that's cool. Man. I'm looking forward to that one. Yeah, 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 he's good. He's a good guy. It's a top bloke. I tell you, who else was? He reminded me of Swami. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Swami's Dougal. a G, bro. Yeah, yeah, they're that very, very business man. Okay. Very similar characters. Yeah, yeah, very, very, very calm. Very like, okay, um, not expressive. Like you know, they're very like sort of almost introverted, if you could yeah. say. Yeah, but but uh, uh, oh my gosh, they they're just talent off off uh, off the books, basically off the charts. Yeah, Swami, I met when he came to Vancouver. They played at a festival here, and it was like probably the only probably one of the only guys that I, it, it's weird like i'm conversing with him but we never talked about music you know what i mean yeah it was business it was like it, it was like one of those conversations where you know like people like oh you know like talk something to do with the music or a beat he did or something no it was all about it was all about business it was all about like life you know what i mean it was so cool it was and he's really, really nice like that isn't it you know what you know yeah. once i don't know whether i've told i've said this about one of my other podcasts he took out half an hour of his time randomly and just told me the ins and outs of sync licensing yeah you were saying bro that's that's big because nobody who, really knows that stuff and who does it who yeah. one no one knows and who wh- wh- he's got no benefit of telling me the ins and outs of it has he there's no benefit yeah. to him but he's such oh. a nice guy I mean, I'll never forget that. I hope it's. I'll I'll never forget what he did there. Do you know what I mean? So uh, I was telling you, remember, I was saying that this is, the, and I told you about taxi and stuff as well. Remember after that? Yeah, 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 yeah. 
Yeah. Yeah. Sync is where it's at. Yeah. We'll see. See how it goes. We've got to finish those track. That that uh, next two tracks are going on on, on uh, taxi. Yeah, <laughs> man. Yeah. We've got to it. finish those tracks. So anyway, let's get back to you. Man. This is what happens. I, 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 yeah. So you so you brought up in um you, your parents moved to Canada. So were you born in Canada? I was born in Canada. Um at like one years old, I was back in the UK for a bit mm-hmm. and then came back again before school started. So it was weird. Like I ended up doing school there, like preschool, whatever it's called. And then things didn't work out. Then I came back here, did preschool yep. here. And then. Um, Which uh, area was you in, in the UK? I was in Southall. Wow. Yeah. So I was in the that was a, quite a Punjabi area. And when you moved to Canada. Which area was yeah. you there initially? I was at that time. I was in East Vancouver. So, so was there was, was there quite East a lot of Vancouver. Punjabi community there at that time? There was, yeah, it was, it was pretty good. Like Gurdwara Sigal Tenar. Yeah, uh, I was in an area. Uh, it was called Main Street. That's kind of like the hub, mm-hmm. where all the Punjabis were. Uh, there's two streets, Main Street and Fraser. But Main Street was the main one. It's mm-hmm. kind of like uh, South Hall Broadway. Let's just put it that way. Our yeah. South Hall Broadway. Now yeah. it's changed now because everyone's kind of moved out now. Yeah. But um, so we were there for a while and then um, we had a big crash here where the economy just collapsed. And then um, we ended up moving further out, which I don't really talk about, but it was basically a, like a ghetto. We were there for, mm-hmm. for quite a bit. And man, I tell you, the shit I saw there, bro, you know, I don't wish that on anyone, I guess. So we were there for a couple of years and then um, moved back to try to go back to England because we had nowhere to go. And then um, dad stayed, sorted stuff out. Then we came back. Then at that point, we moved kind of further into East Vancouver. In, yeah. Uh, like near close to the Godwara. We were there and then um, uh, from there, stayed there for a bit. And then we ended up moving to Delta, which is like near Surrey. Like basically there's one street, Scott Road, which is the border of Surrey and Delta. Mm-hmm. We're, so I pretty much lived Delta from there, from that point on, you know, Surrey, Delta, Surrey, Delta, back and forth. And then between that, um, uh, I was, I was in the UK from 92 to 97, 98. Wow. Somewhere in there, like solid. That was my teens. <laughs> yeah, solid. So, but back and forth, right? But yeah. I was living in the UK. Yeah. Uh, working there. Um, had some cool jobs, man. I worked at the Dizzy Store, HMV. I worked the catering for Moti Raja restaurant. Good times, man. <laughs> yeah, good times. I've done it all, bro. Like, I've done, honestly, I've DJed there for a little bit with a crew and came back here. But it was, um, you know what it was? It was, I just wanted to be part of that UK music scene. Mm. You know, I want to be part of that, but it just never worked out for whatever reason. Guess my luck, maybe me. Yeah. I don't know what it was. Maybe I wasn't UK enough. I don't know what it was, right? But but I never I never re- hated on anyone. So, But I took that influence, and when I came back, I was like, I was the only guy at that time, like, you know, playing UK music parties and weddings and but what stuff. was played before that oh there's this stuff bro this stuff just like Sajid and... oh man they were yeah, people are racist bro with you guys music out here you play you play UK gone at a wedding they'd be like Aki remix Jagana Lata they see gone love right so my brand and what I've based on what I am today is because I I it was because of UK Punjabi music I used but, to get booked for what I play, not for who I am. But which UK? So, so uh, let's just clarify that because yeah. UK uh, Punjabi music was in the eighties as well. Was that yeah, frowned yeah, yeah. upon as well? Like Tony Singh and some and stuff. Peter. Some stuff. Really? Some stuff was like anything with like a like a breakbeat to it or like a you know what I yeah. mean? Yeah. Get it? They see gone and see they see like the Milkeets or whatever. Yeah. But if I drop in like a like a Johnny Z. Yeah. Or Hunta Manachana or something. Yeah. People look at you like, you know what I mean? Yeah. And that's the kind of stuff that I like playing. I like, I was, I was always more of an urban sort of Punjabi music yeah. guy. Right. So, but holy, but, I, but I refuse, but, bro. I, but, I, I refuse. I, I would not, 
I was not a jukebox for anybody. I know. Here's who I am. Here's what I play. If you like it, you like it. You don't, you don't. Yeah. You know? But, but what's funny is that the UK scene is what influenced the India scene in the, in the first place. Do you yeah. know what I mean? And, and you're not liking the original bit. If does that make sense? It doesn't, doesn't quite make sense, does it? <laughs> like yeah, all so the guitar, all the Western yeah. instruments that that came into Indian music, they came from the UK, didn't they originally? Like you know, yeah. People... But you gotta remember, like Jade guys, he they came straight from Punjab, right? So they're yeah. used to like the Sujit Bindrakiyas, the you know what I mean. The yeah, but even uh, before Bindrakiya, the... even even before Bindrakiya yeah. and all these guys. So you're talking yeah. about like like before you had the UK scene, you had Yamla Jat, Kuldeep Manik. Yeah. Like that's it. and they had Wet. only they had only four instruments in the songs wasn't it like exactly. Vajja, exactly yeah Tolik Tolik and you know maybe a guitar and stuff that's it yeah you know so yeah. I'll be... tell you what broke the ice it was Mokit Singh okay wow well. Mokit Singh's album came out which was um that song came out bro that was it it was game over yeah. and i used to play that song like seven eight times at party right and then um there's there was some it was weird like it, 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 you could see kind of like a shift but did it told they gonna sing it you know they would go no matter what right yeah I, I I'll tell you a funny story. I remember when remember when um Mundia to Bajkini came out. Yeah, we agree that's one of the greatest Punjabi songs of all time. Oh yeah, hundred percent. It's a fact. Anyone can argue in the comments of your video. I don't care. It's a fact. That's a game changer. Right? <laughs> you know I mean? Game changer. I so me and my buddy Bob Mann, who's a, a good friend of mine, uh, we had that song because we're in the UK at the same time. We brought it back. Okay, so this is about maybe a month after the song came out so you figured it would have been hot yeah. everywhere else right i remember i played that song and I, I still remember the hall is bear creek hall i remember i played that song people were like what is this and they walked off the dance floor really yeah not only a month later it was like the hottest song in the world we're playing it three four times you know what i mean it's yeah. weird how the dynamics were yeah. that reminds you a bit like um, a, a bit remind you of uh, how when amplifier came out yeah, that had the same the thing here, and I'm one of them because there? Had, okay, yeah, here yeah. it took off like right away. It was done. He, no, it took off around the like. So yeah. you basically, you know how you have the hardcore Birmingham crowd. You know Birmingham yeah, yeah, crowd, yeah. like hardcore yeah, yeah, yeah. Punjabi. If they're not speaking yeah, yeah. proper Punjabi, that's it. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? It, it's yeah, they it, hated oh, that song. What's this? Yeah, they, they hate, you. You got to speak like the music could be like funky, whatever, but your Punjabi has to be on it. Yeah, do you know what yeah. I mean? With, with amplifier, he's not be you know he's he's added loads of English words and and yeah. he, and he's singing what like you know, with all due respect, he's a lot of auto tune and that that wasn't here at that time. Do you know what I mean? That that didn't happen, yeah. and all of us like, sort of frowned upon it. But yeah. you can't knock the guy. The guy went massive, <laughs> bro. It, <laughs> that, it, he he came at the right time for that yeah. generation change, right? Yeah, absolutely. So people don't realize that 2007, 2008 was the was the changing of the guard. Yeah. At he's the moment. guy. He's the guy that brought took Punjabi music right uh, uh outside the Punjabis if, if that makes yeah. sense. Because yeah, otherwise globally. Yeah, exactly. Before <laughs> that it was like Punjabi music was just just amongst in Birmingham, basically Birmingham South, and that's it. Let, let me put it this way. So we did his concerts in North America, right? Twice. Mhm. Mm Sold out shows in cities where they never did Punjabi concerts. Let me put it this way, right? Yeah. So I remember when we talked. So this is when he was the when Unforgettable came out. So this at his peak. Yeah. So we were talking to him. We were trying to book this guy, and there's what 365 days in a year. When we tried to book him, he was booked for 360 shows that one year. So right. you do the math. Crazy. That's how big he was. If Crazy. he was, if he launched today, with how social media is and streaming is, yeah, bro, it'd be game over. He'd be, yeah. he'd be, he'd be up there with like the Garans. You know what I mean? Yeah, the, yeah, whatever. yeah. Hundred percent agree well, with you. So it's just, but I mean, he did that on pure units. Think yeah. about it. He did that on pure CD sales. What yeah. he did 
I mean, whatever it could be, hundred thousand, two hundred fifty. I don't know how many yeah. units he sold, but we'll never know. But I think it's a I, I, number. I think if you go on the iTunes World Chart, right, he's the song's still there. Really? <laughs> yeah, oh. I'm, I'm not. I'm not even. I'm not even blagging yet. This is. I checked a few. Year, I checked a few years back, right? I don't know now. This is, I'm talking to about four, four, five years ago. And yeah, how, yeah, yeah. how old is that track now? Probably. Yeah, 2008. Right, it came out. Yeah, 2008, 2008. So I checked about four, five years ago. It was still yeah. like in in the, in the top top ten of world music iTunes chart. I'm not about streaming. I'm about you know iTunes yeah. the 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 sales chart. It's still there. But but. You know, hate on what you want, but when we go back to talk about you like Punjabi music, UK's been there for those global changes. Yeah, Mundiato Batsky was by far the biggest Punjabi song ever, bro. I'm at a Lakers game in LA, mm -hmm. Los Angeles Lakers game, right? And they played that at the at the thing. Crazy, and I'm just like, I, like it was such a surreal moment, right? I'm just like, holy, like at that point, I'm like, shit, we made it. Mm -hmm. right and now you got like the jeeps doing sold out shows across the world like it, yeah. you know how we progressed but it all started to, from somewhere to be fair UK, you, you, you know people miss this about uk uk music is i don't i think people don't know in the 80s and early 90s we already crossed over into the mainstream here because you only had four yeah. five four channels here five channels so you yeah. had like you remember blue peter yeah yeah Soul to spawn it. Yeah. Up yeah. Sangeetha on it. They were all on, yeah. on these shows. Top like, of the pops. Exactly. We were all on it. Uh, and and uh, people forget, like, with all due respect to everyone else, no, I'm not I'm not saying, you know, they, 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 got, they got there because they deserve it. But we were all on it already. In the, the UK, we're doing it. It just, it you just. Know, I had the same conversation with GV. You know GV. Right? Yeah, yeah, GV, yeah. So, and we were going back and forth because, you know, all these people hitting accolades, like, XYZ got a million Spotify, billion yeah. Spotify, this and that. And um, he was saying, he said to me, he goes, I'm gonna, he goes, look, he goes, what's happening in today's music is unbelievable. He goes, but we did this 20 years ago. Exactly. Right. And I had to think about that. I'm like, yeah, bro, like you guys did. Yeah. He goes, the problem is no one knows about it. I go, exactly, yeah, because yeah. no one talks about it. I go, there's not, there's nothing dedicated to, like, if you look at 90s hip hop, you go on Instagram, how many, how many accounts you see of people just like, like you're on my Instagram. You see, I'm always popping. Yeah, pop. definitely. Right. We don't have, we don't have that. We yeah. don't have that. Yeah. that, that, that. And definitely, uh, uh, we know the UK Pongola movies and snippets we're doing. Yeah. That Ruby's doing. They're blowing yeah. up, bro. She doesn't even yeah. do that regular. One, one of them, yeah. Sukshinda Shinda, just getting like tens and tens and tens and thousands of just views. And it's a little one minute clip. That's cool, though. It's just That's blowing good. up. Yeah. Because they're talking about that stuff. They're talking about what happened. It's it's crazy, bro. It's crazy stuff. And anyway, we keep getting we keep getting distracted. So uh, how did My you bad, get into bro. music? <laughs> I just love this stuff, man. I love getting the comment. Because we well, every time it's a five-minute phone call with me, and you, we end up talking for like two hours, right? Exactly, yeah. My apologies, man. I'll let you read the shit. Yeah, My bad, man. My bad. No, no, bro, bro. This is what it's about. It's, I, 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 you know, I'd rather just talk about and just, if anyone listens to it, they listen to it. If they don't, oh, you and I have had a laugh. They'll listen, man. <laughs> you know. So when, yeah, how, when, how, when people are passionate, when, like yourself, when when people are passionate about music, it comes out authentic. Exactly, yeah. And that's the vibe of, of the show, you know. Of this, it's not about. That's why some of those shows you probably see podcasts have done have been a bit difficult because. Um, the purse. It's been a bit hard to interview certain people because yeah. there's no vibe. Yeah, yeah, fair yeah, enough. Yeah, do you know what I mean? Which sometimes ha it happens, and it's not it's not the person's fault because they might not be you know used to podcasts and there's language barriers and this and that. So you know, yeah. all of it. But anyway, how did you get into music? The thing, the first so, place. Uh, what did you I do first, GJ Ingles, singing? Because I know you sing as well. So we have this thing in school. Um, it's called like the the AV Club, where you go and set up. You know, as a student, you go set up like microphones when you do speeches in school. Yep, yep. And this and that. And at that AV audio video. So yeah, yeah. AV yeah. audio video yeah. setting yeah. up projectors. Like, I'm talking, yeah. bro. Like these kids would be like projector. Like what? Like what? what yeah. You know what I mean? So <laughs> you know, we'd set those up, and then I remember I had a, I st you know, I still I still talked to Wade, one of my friends, his older brother. Um, like he was like he was way older, so I was like 
12, 13 at the time. He was in high school and um, he he had a, he was a big Public Enemy fan. I don't know if you know who Public Enemy is. The yeah, yeah, I know Public Enemy. But, yeah, Public Enemy. So he was a big, pub, like, he, bro, his license plate had Public Enemy on his license plate. This Man. is way back in like 80s, right? So I used to go to his house and he used to play all this music and it'd be Public Enemy. And then at that time, when we were growing up, there's a lot of racism, right? And, um, you know, being brown, like, I, you know, I, I mean, that's a podcast for another day. It's kind of the stuff I went through. But, you know, it was hard, man, growing up, you know, in the, in, in that sort of area where we were. Um, so he was doing that. And I was listening to the music he'd play all the time when I go over, like, Public Enemy. It was very street conscious hip hop, right? But so relatable to me at the time. Mm -hmm. And then um, I just, you know, said, hey, man, can I, you know, at that time we used to make tapes for each other, right? Cassette tapes. Yeah. He's like, oh, I'll make you a cassette tape with a bunch of songs on it. So he made me a cassette tape. And I, I probably rinse that tape every day. Like, I, I probably still even have it. I think it's one of my things. Wow. I got to check my box. I still have it. It won't work. Like, it's all jammed or whatever, but I have it. And um, so I just kept listening. He had that. He had, like, NWA on there and some other, like, it was hardcore, like, gangster rap. But it was the it was the message in there, because it hit home, and I just kind of like fell in love with hip hop. And then um, at that time, um, break dancing was big, and this and that sort of DJing and MCing. Yep. And um, you know, at school, I was setting up this thing where some group was coming in to kind of perform, and they were you know they had the DJ in the back and two guys two guys rapping, and they started going. And I was just mesmerized. I'm like, holy, this is fantastic. Like, this guy's on, like, the turntables, like, really, you know, I'm like, wow, I want to do that, right? So I was working, doing paper routes. So we had paper routes where, you know, like, the newspaper. Yeah, 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 yeah. I used to go around the neighborhood, do paper routes, and I saved up to get my first set of turntables. And, you know, bought a couple of records, and that was it. I just started, you know, playing. And then from there, went to, like, I, I started doing that. And then people kind of, I started making tapes for, like, my friends. And then um, started making tapes. This bro, this is before like like these turntables were just turntables. They were like pitch control. Like there was no beat yeah, mixing. I, I, I got, yeah, yeah. I was I was basically like I'm playing the song and I put the other one to mix into the next one. I'm like speeding it up with the record, try to match the beat. Like I, this is old school, bro. Like Man. you know what I mean? This is like straight Jalu stuff. So I was making these tapes. The tapes were horrible. I gotta admit, like the the the, the beat, the you know, the mixing in between, whatever. Right, so I made these tapes for my friends, and then um, we had came up to it was like a school dance coming up, and they're like, "Hey, why don't you play the music on there?" I'm like, "Sure, I'll play it." And then I remember it was like a grade six, whatever that would be in the UK. It's like grade five or six. I did the school dance for like the graduating class. They were going into middle school, and um, I played that, and people were like, you know, started booking me for like other things. Uh, so when I was the following year, when I was in grade seven, is when really popped off. Like I was DJing like all the time with these like, small little functions. Like all the schools in my area, I was doing them, like small parties, right? And then that graduated from like high school graduations. So I'm like, you know, fourteen year old doing like high school graduations. And then That's crazy, yeah. So coming back to the Public Enemy part, you know, I was a big Public Enemy fan. They came to concert, and at that time, there was a big DJ here. His name was Maximus Clean. Big, uh, I got, he was sort of like, he's a Chinese guy, big Chinese guy, right? And he was the DJ for them on tour in Canada. And I knew him from like, just meeting him through like, you know, uh, just like, I go to the store, buy records, you see other DJs and stuff. Yeah. And he had a public enemy t-shirt on and a, or a jacket, you know, those puffy jackets that we all used to wear? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Puffy jacket <laughs> color. So he had one with a big Maximus or sorry, with a big public enemy thing on the back. And I'm like, Hey, wow, man, that's a cool jack. We just started, we start talking. It's like, Oh, I'm Maximus clean. I go, I'm a DJ too, man. Like blah, blah, blah. He goes, Oh, come by the club, you know, maybe get you on a set. I'm like, really? Right. So I'm like 14, 15. Right. And I'm like, sure. So I came up, I go to the front door with my, with my case of records. We take, we take the guys looking at me like, you're not allowed in here, bro. Like you took the you know what I mean? I go, but the guy told me to come and play. So I got kicked out. I didn't come back. So and we didn't have phones back then, right? So I saw him again. He's like, You didn't come by the club. I go, I came. 
And I go, but he wouldn't let me in because I'm underage. He's like, don't worry, you come with me. So then I went with him and he let me play. Like, I didn't get to play any, like, I'm playing, like, where there's nobody in the crowd, right? Like, I'm yeah, just yeah, gotcha. an opener, right? So I'm like, I'm, I played the gig and whatever. Things started, you know, slowly started popping. I'd open for everybody in the clubs. And at that time, 14, 15, I'm earning like 100 bucks a night back then. So, like, that was big money for me, right? That's crazy. Yeah, at 14, 15. Like, I, listen, I th- listen, if you're 14, 15, I'm not saying you do this, okay? Let's just be real here, <laughs> okay? This is just how it started. And then um, we're DJing one night, and there were some uh, promoters there. Some, it was, I still remember his name was Suki. He, I knew him because I, I, I was a big, I played football, right? Like with the local teams, the Punjabi teams. So mm-hmm. this guy was like, you know, he was a money man. He was a real estate guy, had money, and uh, he was promoting a gig. And he's like, he saw me there. He's like, oh, I didn't know you, DJ. I go, well, I didn't know either until, <laughs> you know what I mean? So they started putting me on. He goes, we're doing the gig. Uh, you know, you should come and play there. I go, sure. He goes, who are you doing? He goes, Bali Sagu. So Bye. this is when Bali Sagu came to Vancouver for the first time. This was a club called 86th Street, way back, early 90s. Yeah. Uh, um, and I, I didn't know who he was. I'll be honest with you. I, I you know, I was strictly hip hop. I knew, like, I knew my first cassette was Hida, Dance from Hida. So that was that was pretty much the only sort of Punjabi music I knew at the time, right? Other than that, it was, like, Shabd and Maskeen G and stuff like that. Yeah. Like, my mom and dad would listen to when we used to travel all the time, right? There's no, there was no Punjabi music in the car, bro. None, right? So I'm like, yeah, let's do it, right? So I went on, obviously, dead crowd. No one was there. I did my thing, played my music, and I'm strictly hip-hop. And then this guy, Bali Sigu, comes on. Okay, and he's like playing Punjabi music, and he's got these hip hop records, and he's like beat mixing over top, bro. That was it for me. I I was in love. I'm like, that's what I want to do. That that's day, crazy. that night, the next, yeah, the next night. I so he's doing signings at my buddy's video shop, bro. I was harassing him, like, bro, like, blah blah blah, like, you know, I was asking him all these questions. Now, he's getting pretty annoyed. You could tell, right? Like he's trying to sign this. He's like, oh, I do this, I do that. I go, well, you know, how do you get how do you get your vinyls? He goes, oh, my dad owns a a, a music store. Remember, I think his dad owned a music store. I've been to it on uh, in Birmingham. Yep, somewhere like he owned a music store. He was like, yeah, we just you just buy all the vinyls from there. He's give me some tips. So I phone England pretty much like that next day after, and I'm like, bro, like start buying vinyls for me. I'll send you money, whatever it is. That was it. Started my vinyl collection get them and then i started djing here because after that i got to know a bunch of punjabis right so i I started i'm like hey i'll do for free let me do your party i just want to spin for half an hour right i just want i just want to i just wanted to play the music right because i loved hip-hop and then i found this newfound love for uk punjabi music right because it was very it was very modern right Mm -hmm. drums and everything So I'm like, I I think this is a go. And then, you know, one went to two, two went to four. And then back then, and like pretty much like in the whole area, everyone knew who I was. Right. You know what I mean? Like I was doing college parties. I was doing all the dissy functions. And then just like, like school university things, you know, half an hour here, 20 minutes there. Yep. And it's fantastic. I was just remixing live and I was doing mixtapes and stuff and just handing stuff out to people like straight hustling. Right. And then, um, my one of my buddies like uh you know who kind of encouraged me he's like uh bro i'm getting like his older brother's getting married and like his name like he wanted he wanted dj too right but his brother's getting married he's like hey why don't you dj my brother's wedding up i ain't no dj no wedding bro like <laughs> what the fuck how hard i'll tell you know people are gonna like <laughs> do thing at me right because no man you got this and um i'm like okay so i dj'd his brother's wedding and not gonna lie like it it went really well right because my thing was and i've always been like that i see punjabi right no disrespect to anybody else no discriminatory culture yeah. i played punjabi music even when people were sitting down and eating yeah right i played all the hits like you know what i mean like if you're sitting down and eating like i'll play like whatever you for me, it was about making memories, right? So I want yeah. people, bro. I used to get more bookings out of people listening to my music sitting down than me DJing, because it'd be like, oh man, I haven't heard that song. Bochir ho ya gana ni sunya, 
they're not number day, bro. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, so I, it were you nervous? Kind of weird, huh? Were you nervous doing a wedding for the first time? Oh, bro. Yeah. You know what? I'll be honest with you. Most weddings I did, I was nervous. Most weddings I did, especially your first one. First one was first one was okay because I didn't know what to expect. Yeah. And they're like, I knew everybody there. Right. I knew everyone there because they've heard me. I was like, I didn't realize how bad uncles were <laughs> until I started DJing. This is what yeah. I'm talking about. Like, ah, do I mean, I love that. This, and that. I didn't, yeah. I never got that heat forever because I'm in a booth in a club yeah. where no yep. one can say anything to me. So that was new to me when they were coming up to me and not requesting stuff, but basically ready to throw hands. You know what? Like, it was, it was weird to me. I'm like, I'm like, Uncle Titi, got the gusa who had done the Ghana in Laya. Like, I'm not here. Like, I'm not saying anything insulting to your your family. To see, I mean, mm. you know what I mean? Like, I'm arguing with uncles, like auntie and stuff, like over Ghana. Like, it was really weird to me. I'm like, what's like, I almost quit. I'm like, bro, I can't do this, man. Like, you know, so this is going to get some serious. But then they're like, no, nah, man, you got this, right? So then out of that party, someone booked me. Like, it was weird. I, I just kept getting booked out of. I've never printed a business card ever in my life. Mm -hmm. Never, never. I'd never had the desire. I never, I never wanted to be a busy DJ. I'll be honest with you, Raj. I never really did. It's just mm -hmm. luck, fortune. I don't know. I think it was more, it wasn't me as a person that I got booked. It's what I played and how I played it. When you're yeah, playing. but it, it's, it's a trika too, right? Like a lot of DJs, are like I'm gonna play whatever I want, right? Which is fine. I did, but there's also a way to play. Like if you're on stage singing a song and you can judge the crowd, there's certain songs you're not gonna do. You're gonna switch your order. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You know, yeah. It's a game of chess. Yeah, that's the way I look at it, right? Like you know, I'm not gonna if the whole family's out there, you know, dancing and stuff. You know, BB's out there. I'm not gonna drop Tupac right right after. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly that. Yeah. And there's certain there's certain things you gotta look at. So. But it, it was it was it was a it was a learning curve, but I had to learn pretty quick because um I didn't like I said I grew up in a different I grew up in a neighborhood there was Punjabis but it was everybody Spanish, you know white folk. It was only till I moved to um, the Surrey side where I really experienced sort of like a lot of Punjabis all at once, and obviously being in the UK. Mm -hmm. But UK Punjabis were different than the Punjabis that were in. You know, it was weird. It's a culture shock for me. It was a, it was a, it was tough, bro. How so? Like coming, uh, UK, uh, coming back to Vancouver. How were they different? Just, just out of curiosity. It, it te bo desi ya, like in in desi. in Canada. In Canada, straight desi. Because I think we're hardcore desi here yeah, in Birmingham. No man, you guys, you guys, no man, like no, like it hege desi, but yeah. this is straight pindu desi. Yeah. Right at that time. Because, like, because, because you know when I was young, you mentioned about hip hop and stuff. We, we. When we were, when I was in school, all of us, all of us listened to Pangra music. We didn't listen to hip hop. Yeah. So, do you know what I mean? Because it was frowned yeah. upon, sort of thing. And uh, we listened to a uh, uh, black people's music. That, yeah. That's what that's what we were told. Yeah, yeah. yeah. See, we never <laughs> had that because yeah, we had that. Yeah. Uh, I, I guess because where I grew up. Yeah. But you got to remember, you're also a generation ahead, right? Yeah. So you had more time to sit with Punjabis than I did at my time. Yes. Right? That's why yeah. what I'm saying. Yes. I think maybe that's kind of like why I love coming to the UK because there's more of our kind. Yeah. In one sort of saturated spot. Yeah. I never had that in Vancouver, right? So it, it was just it was just different two different worlds. And then it's just I just got lucky, bro. DJ just took off. But I never I I would tell people straight, like even in my even to my last gig, I'm like this is who I am. This is what I'm going to play. I don't want to hear what you want to play. I want to hear what you don't want me to play. I had a don't playlist. That's That was the difference. I'm like, you tell me the songs you don't want me to play. Yeah. And I won't play them. I don't care what they are. Even if they're the hottest record in the world, I'm not going to play them. But yeah. everything else is free for all. And I don't want to hear no BS after the fact. I go, you got to let me do my work. Let me do my thing. I go, I will guarantee you a good show or don't pay me. Mm. No, that's yeah. a great way of looking at it. Out of out of all the gigs I did in my life, I had one guy that never paid me. And he was okay. just being an asshole. Man. So 
What about sort of a, you know, when you mentioned you got into DJing, so yeah. I'm, I'm not a DJ. So how did you actually learn the craft of DJing? You know, this, this podcast is about musical yeah. excellence and how you learn music. So yeah. Explain to me as a, as a, as a, as a, uh, an amateur, okay. how did you learn yeah. that? Cause you got the decks that time. I got the decks. And then the first thing I had to learn was how to count BPMs on a record. Mm -hmm. Right. So you put the needle on the record, start it from the kick to that first bar. You got to mm -hmm. count time-wise mm -hmm. minutes or seconds, whatever it is. Then there's a formula that you use to say, okay, X, Y, Z divided by this will give you the BPM. That's mm -hmm. how I learned. So who told I, you I that? Even, I don't know. Sorry. Who told you that? Uh, Maximus Clean. Okay. Nice. Maximus Clean. So he goes, that's how. So then he taught me, he goes, what you want to do is get these. I wish I had, I, I got some, I'll show you. And personally, I got, I got my old records where, where I've written the from BPM calculating money. the BPMs, right? Yeah. So then he's like, okay, once you calculate them, put them all in order from BPN, from uh, fastest to slowest. Mm -hmm. He goes, don't worry about genre, don't care, just whatever. I'm like, okay. Right. And then he, he like, even the little thing, he goes, look, when you DJ, you take the record, you put it like this in the crate, you pull it out and you leave that there because you know when to put the record back. You know, mm. like little little things like that. So if you notice, I remember back in the day, we put the record, put it up like this. Right. I don't know if you noticed, like back in the day when we were like the DJ with vinyl. So little things like that, just to kind of streamline your flow. Right. And he's the one who taught me. He goes, look, the way I DJ, I'm not saying you suggest it. So he would DJ, he'd come in, play the song, first hook, verse, next song done. First hook, verse, next song. That's how I started DJing. Verse, what, sorry, verse, chorus, verse. So you play the first hook, play the yep. first verse, hook, you've mixed into the other song. Gotcha. So in a night, when you when you used to come to my parties at a Punjabi gig, you'd hear about two, three hundred songs. Mm -hmm. All the hits. Verse, hook, verse, hook. The most fights I ever got to was people saying, oh, tu sara gana, sara gana ni laya tu. Have you been in India recently? Sorry? Have you been in India recently? Uh, last time I was there it was 2018. They're Cause, the same. Cause India is the same, bro. They're worse. Yeah. They do like 30 seconds of the song. Yeah, yeah, yeah. they're worse. Switch. Yeah, I noticed that. And it's like, they don't do, they, they do it at an odd time. Yeah. It's like, just... so random. Like, if you do it right, people won't notice. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, Gotcha, yeah. I, so... <laughs> Because you're that, talking about actually mixing it in, aren't you? Mixing the BPN, mixing the yeah the, the, at, the, the, uh, at the queue and you blend it all in. Yeah. They just switch a song from 30 seconds to another song. It, but that's the thing. And the other, the other thing too, like, I've had talks with other DJs about this too. Like it's it's how you play. You're not going to take a hook. You're not going to take a song, play the hook, then go to a worse song per se, right? Then people are going to notice, right? No mm. matter how good you are. Like you gotta, you gotta look at energy. You gotta look at. There's so many things you gotta look at, right? Hmm. So I would set my, I would, I would DJ live, but I had records put in strategic places. I'm like, these five records are gonna go, these five records are gonna go, whatever, you know. Like, okay, now we're gonna go into house music. Okay, so we're gonna start with this one, and blah blah blah. So it was still strategic at the end of the day. Hmm. Right? Did you Even practice at home? Or... Did, you, did you practice at home first? So or... oh, all the time, bro. All the time. My practice was making mixtapes for my friends. Hmm. That's what I would do. I'm like, yeah, I'll make a tape for you. And, um, you know, especially so how do you, like you. I mean, how did you do that? Like, sort of, I'm just trying to picture it in my head. I, I, I had a little set up at home. So when I made enough money, I bought two, like, uh, speakers. Like, just um, an amp and two speakers. Yeah. And set up in my basement at the house. I had my turntables. And my just my speakers, and that was it. That's all I should do every day after school. Just just sit there and just not practice, just listen to music. That's the I think that's the difference between me and a lot of the guys at the time of my peers is I would listen to music. You know mm. what I mean? Like like I would like even with Punjabi music, like you know, like you can take like say Pradesi's like um Pamba the Pangada, whatever it is, seven, eight minutes long, right? Me strategically, I would actually play certain parts of that song throughout the night cut back like because you know that yep. multi-tempo yep. song right so i would like you know i'll play something and i'll I'll slip that in there like i remember later on like you know when things went digital mm -hmm. and people like doing mixing you know like in the computer 
I remember DJing and getting comments from these kids like, oh, what mixtape is that? I'm like, bro, what are you talking about mixtape? I'm doing it live in front of you. They're like, no, bro, like, uh, what's the mixtape? Like, I'm like, no, I'm doing it live. Like, I'm going to show you, you know, come here and I'll show you. So it, it was weird how, like, that transition was. I'm like, mm -hmm. there's nothing that I didn't do, um, you know, with MIB and stuff like those mixtapes did. We can talk about that whenever. But where, you know, we didn't do live somewhere, like whatever we did, we put on, if we put onto a mixtape or CD, we, we were doing it live in, and I was a big proponent of it. Like, I'm not going to just create something where, you know, it's like fake to me. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. That's kind of like where I, I, I really respect Bali Sagu for that because the stuff that you hear on his CDs is stuff that he was doing live, like back in the eighties because I've heard some of his mixes, right? Mm. He's doing it live. So, you know, it was, it was authentic authenticity was a big thing for me. And I mm -hmm. stuck by that rule. It was a blessing and a curse. I lost a lot of gigs because of that. I'm not mm -hmm. gonna lie, like DJs now, bro, you've seen it. These road shows, they're on seven figures a year, all day. Crazy. All day. Right? I was never that guy. It was never about money. It was about I never sold out. You know, it was so bad where Certain areas were so dissy that I refused to book gigs there because I knew I'd get beat up. Is that bad? Jay Galt, Gana Lata. Yo, 100%, bro. Jay, Jay Meg Galt, Gana, Gana Lata. You know, people come up to you. You know, you, like, I, like, you know what I mean? I ain't no, like, punk either, right? Like, I'm not going to get, you know, Gustata Hundaya. Yeah. So, yeah, I just knew myself. I go, I'm not going to go there and just get to go get beat up because of some song. Like, that's just stupid, right? This dumb shit. It's like Man. getting fights over music, it's the dumbest bro. I guess like I used to get in fights with Antia. <laughs> That's crazy. Honestly, but I got any lie. I'm like, what do you mean? What go and have some show lip to it for God's sake, you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> What's your like what you seriously like you sit like honestly, you gotta think of the mentality of someone. You came up to me yelling and screaming at a gig which is free for you free food free booze you didn't pay for a ticket and you're whining about a song yeah it makes no sense bro honestly crazy crazy uh it's just me as a singer i don't I, I tend not to do any weddings or parties i don't do them because because as a singer right yeah i, I don't know whether you can relate with this dj is a bit different because you're playing different types of music but you you run the risk of um just becoming a a background noise yeah I you know, unless you're unless you're that. really known unless you're like really really well known like you mulgeet sang or jazzy b or someone uh, yeah. everyone just sits down and just carries on and just your your, your background noise <laughs> I don't yeah they'll yeah. yeah, oh, be complaining oh the way they're gonna go you know what i mean like just... exactly yeah so I, I i don't i tend not to do weddings at all yeah, yeah, that's fair enough, man. It's not for everybody. Yeah. I didn't want to do weddings. I was, honestly, I refused, like, when I was to book weddings, I I would look at the couple and I would say, do I fit them? It wasn't the other way around. I was mm. interviewing them, mm. right? And I would say to my girl, that's fine. You want to book me? There's one condition. You got to come to the club and hear me play. Because mm. what you hear in the club is going to be your, 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 your reception. It ain't mm. no wedding reception. It's going to be a freaking party. Hmm. right if you're okay with that then we'll talk mm -hmm. right if they never showed up i never booked them hmm. it just wasn't worth it to me bro because like i said my like me my brand my my authenticity meant everything to me hmm. you know what i mean like i didn't want to book something for whatever two three thousand dollars and i go there and like i i destroy the party because they didn't like my music it's possible hmm. It's not me or my technical ability. I yeah, just yeah. couldn't jive with the crowd. Like, why would I yeah. want to risk that? Yeah. Every party I've done where I had the backing, because, you know, I've had parties where Bungay went off, right? People yelling and screaming. Every one that I did where the bride and groom would come up, where the family would be, like, standing right behind me, like, no, you guys need to shut up and let them play. Mm -hmm. The party went off the hook every single time. Hmm. I still remember those, like, like I still remember them in my head. All the parties where, you know, the family came up on the mic, like, you guys need to calm down or leave. Like, those parties were unbelievable. 
but that was a relationship I wanted. I told him, I go, you're not booking the DJ, man. You're, you're, you're like, this is going to be memorable. Like you're yeah. going to go back and watch this and you're going to be like, you know, throwing your hands up in the air. Like while you're watching the video, I go, it's going to be nonstop. Mm. Right? These, like these are the conversations I'm having. I'm not like, Oh, you know, well, if you want this package, it's going to cost you X amount of dollars. It was, I never brought money up ever. Mm. It was the last, very last thing I, I was trying to sell them. I was trying to sell them, uh, uh, like Ibiza, you know what I mean? You, but basically you're selling them experience. I'm, isn't it? Basically I'm trying to yeah. sell them an experience. I go, and I would tell them, I go, I would be straight. I go, I may not be the right guy for you. That was usually mm. the first thing, right? I'm like, I appreciate you like me. I appreciate you want me, but am I the right guy for you? Cause here's what you're going to get. Mm. Right. Like I'm talking like, you know, people like people are going to be like going ballistic. You know what I mean? Mm. Cause I was a one, I was the original guy that did video dance parties. Not like screens, mm. like screen, like people have screens, bro. I was DJing videos. So Crazy. like you see, yeah, you see the videos and you see them on the stage. So how did you do that? You had a CD or like a DVD? Or, or uh, it was so. Um, we all use. I don't know what it is now, but back then, when we went digital, there's a software called Serato. Serato is a DJ software, right? Rings, rings a bell. I yeah. Guess. So they came up with hardware in a box where you could basically put your MP3s digital and you could DJ. I was on the. I was one of the beta testers, right? Really so well. the, I, yeah, bro. Let me tell you something. If I find those videos of like beta testing, it was so bad. Like it was so bad. I'm talking, you play the record and go brrrr. Like it was just like, it was so bad. Like the original beta testing, right? But then they were testing, uh, it was called Serato VJ, which mm -hmm. was a plugin where you could mix videos. And I still have it. Bro, that was a game changer. Like, you know, screens is one thing. Like, uh, you know, I, and I hate to say this. I know, I know it's it's the couples party, and it's all about them. And mm -hmm. you go to parties now; it's got their name blasted everywhere, and they're on their floor, and that's fine, man. But when you booked me, I didn't care who you were. I didn't care if you're the bride, groom, father, whatever. Like, once I'm on, it's mine. I mm -hmm. own, I own it, right? So, like, I would play videos, and I would make custom sort of things and chops, and and um. You know, I find out who their favorite sports team is. I would like, you know, cut stuff up, make special stuff. Like it was, it was pretty cool, man. The stuff I missed that, but it was a lot of work. So I try to what make was, as memorable as possible. What were the actual parties like in Canada at that, that time? Like here, you had, you had like, you know, school halls you started for school halls. Was it a similar mm. thing? There? Same, bro. Same, same. Uh, halls, community centers. Yeah. Um, and then that I missed those days. I really miss those days when we used to bring in our own rig yeah. and come in and set up because every, every DJ was different. Mm. You know what I mean? Everyone had their own little spice. It was like a nice, healthy competition. Mm. And then like, I don't know about there. Then it changed like in the, in the early two thousands where man, Upwardness sort of saw the money and they're like, okay, well, if we build a hall, do our own catering, yeah, and have a built-in DJ. That's all the money we get to keep. Yeah, and that's kind of what happened here. Yeah, right. So, but Halewi, there's you know you can still do the setups, but it's it's different now. It it's it's a totally different game now. I mm. I couldn't do it, man. Like I'd need a crew of like five or six. You know, Crazy. game change, Ogi, bro. Like it's nuts. Passage in the they are set up new equipment, land new. You're probably talking like probably 150 200 grand it's crazy man yeah right totally different game totally and then totally on top different. of that you got to market yourself properly yeah market yeah. yourself because here you had the whole scene of djs were marketing themselves by getting the track ghost produced putting it on brit asia tv or, or z sorry z music box then and that's how they'd get bookings <laughs> oh, hey, listen. Uh, you, I'm glad you said it. I, was just, I didn't. I didn't think you were gonna bring this up. That's hilarious. That's awesome. Uh, boom. Yeah. Yeah. But you know, it, it, but it is what it is, right? At the end of the day, any publicity is good publicity. I always say that. Yeah. It is what it is. But it doesn't make sense. Like as a musician, you're hiring a DJ who's produced a track. It, it doesn't mean he's a good DJ or not, but. 
he just produced the track and his video yeah. and he's not even produced it. Someone Suki Chan's produced it or Cam Frantic's produced it. <laughs> <laughs> <Do you know? laughs> so Yeah, you you I and I sorry. think that, that the UK did a very good job. And I mean this like I'm looking at it as a business now, right? Yeah. As like taking that DJ to the slash artist. Yeah, they killed the Pangna industry. <laughs> Sorry, they killed the UK Pangna industry. That's what happened. Yeah, that's, I blame my, I, that's my I, controversial I blame opinion. B21 for that one. They need, yeah. then they know, but whatever. Yeah, they're the band killers. Oh, gosh, nah, respect to them, man. But, but um, do you know what? I'm mean, gonna, I don't know whether you heard one of my podcasts, I'm not gonna mention who it was. Uh, now they said one of the artists, right. This was his theory on what killed the UK Pangra industry here. The band scene, this is what killed it. I don't know whether you, you agree on this. So he said that before, all the band members, including the singer, all the used to get equal amount of money. But then he goes, one artist, what he started doing, he didn't have his, he didn't have a fixed band. He came as an artist and he'd charge five grand for himself and then pay each person 200 quid. Right, as session players. Yeah, session players. It's not, a, whereas, it's not a band, yeah. Yeah, whereas before you had a full band, you hired the band, and the band wasn't as expensive because everyone had two hundred pound singer and two hundred pound, and that's why everyone could afford a band. So this was yeah. his theory. I, I, I don't know how true this is. Uh, this is what he, he, he this is what he said, and then and then he said, but this other singer came in on the scene and he he changed the game, the way it was done. So bands became uh, uh, singers came a lot more expensive than DJs. Which is why Jesus yeah. prospered. Yeah. I don't necessarily agree with that, but that, that's that's what he Are said. Are we going there? Are we at that stage? Are we gonna talk about other things first? Because it's a good it's a good question. You can talk, you maybe we'll come back, come back. Yeah. You, can, you can talk so about this. I, I, it's it's um I think it's a complicated problem, but mm -hmm. the problem is it accelerated too quick. I think from outside looking in, mm -hmm. I think what killed the UK bands was their lack of releasing music because you can't you can't no one's going to book a band on stuff from you know especially if you're not big like a Malkith who's got endless pots of hits yeah, yeah. from stuff from five years ago mm. so that continual and no one says you should you know and I'm talking like the EP era because that mm -hmm. was late that was late 80s early like that was late 90s 2000s right so even if you did four songs right I think you need a continual sort mm -hmm. of cycle so people know who you are because mm -hmm. listenership changes, right? Yeah. the Echonics and the Premies or whatever, but my kids don't know. No. Right? They're not going to go back and listen to catalog, right? But my kid knows who Eminem is. Why? Mm. Right? My kid knows who even like some of these 90s rappers are. They're not as big as Eminem. Why? Because mm. they're continually doing something, right? But there was that. Go on. No, I was saying, don't you think though? So the the UK bands, right? So you have the UK bands, but look at look at the rock bands. They they've kept their fan base. Like you you can hire a rock band out now, right? Uh, and they they like like Bon Jovi, for example. Now, yep. if Bon Jovi performed in a show now, right, he'll still sell out the arena and he still could get his old fan for. But the but UK bands didn't have that, did they? Like you know. I agree, but but don't forget Bon Jovi just released an album. I know, I know, I've I've, I've downloaded. Yeah. I haven't really heard it all yet, yeah. but I'm just. You told me about it. Yeah, you I know. told me about it. Yeah, 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 yeah. But but you see what I'm saying? But they're still they're still active. They're still right? relevant. Our yeah. problem our problem was we weren't active. Like yeah. we, you can't expect, you know, like Remy to be on or whatever to be on socials like all the time. It's just not their genre. It's just not that. It's not that it's not what they do, right? Dude, they're shooting themselves in the foot. The amount of people I've I've, I've invited on this podcast, right? Yeah, it's, it's not my thing, you know. Podcasting, it's uh, and uh, that's completely fine, right? It, yeah. But, but then you look at what you look at what when B twenty one came in, what they did, they were instant superstars. Yeah. Right, because they're doing all the right things at the time. They were mm. going on shows, interviews, and you know what I mean. They were good lads or you know it was that, that yeah. like i said the changing of the guard right yep and so why would you want to book someone that you don't that you don't know what they're gonna do mm -hmm. you can book someone like that who's whatever 
you know, musically mm. they were different. You know what I mean? It was, I don't know. And then at, at some point it's like when you got one producer producing everything for you, like you got, you know, you got say excellency. It's like produced by X, Y, Z. Are you really excellency? No, not anymore. You know I mean? Yeah. So, I mean, do people care? I don't know. I know I did. Right. Like, like if you listen to excellencies, like, you know, made and stuff like that, the classics, yeah. regardless of who was playing, like that was, that was band unity. Right. They sounded, that's the thing. That's the thing that people don't understand is the UK Punjabi bands. They all sounded different. Yep. In their heyday. All of them. If you yep. go to India and listen to these individual singers, they all sounded the same musically. It was a voice that was distinct, right? Don't get me because, started on that, man. Because they, they all had the same session players. Yeah. Top of the range, grade A, some of the best in the world. That is, I agree, right? But at the end of the day, right? What you what UK had, and that's why I was attracted to UK putting on music, is like you could you could hear a song like, okay, that's Hira. You can hear a song, like, okay, that's Pradesi, right? Just by just before they even start singing, the riffs beats whatever it, it, it was so yeah. cool like it was competition sometimes like oh you know well, i got a new song and you're like do you want to know who it is i go hit play on the cassette you're like you know listen to it oh i think it's you know xyz or whatever right yeah. that changed man i think that was uh for me personally that was like i don't know where this is going with the uk punjab music you could kind of see the the downfall when like you know one two three people are doing everything literally in like two three studios are cranking everything out that's what's happening now like yeah you've got like um i think you've got about two or three bands here and the bands are covering all the artists any artist that comes from from india they'll yeah. they'll, they'll, they'll session play with them and, and it sounds don't get me wrong the musicians are phenomenal right like, best yeah the 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 yeah. but the the the, 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 the music sounds all the same yeah yeah, there's no, as you said, there's no variation. Anyway, we 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 digress. Digress. Yeah, let's get back to you, bro. Sure. <laughs> so, how did um uh, uh Monday in Black come? It was weird. So I was I was in the studio at the time. So I guess we should talk about that too. So obviously the progression was from DJing to kind of like you know I was I was very big in the Canadian hip hop scene in mm-hmm. my area like rascals and all these guys all these guys that came in through so i used to you know i got to know them through djing because i was usually the dj before you know you just meet people mm-hmm. and then i'm like oh you know i want to go in the studio and i was just really fascinated by it. so i got to go in the studio watch these guys and then um that's when the, the love of music really kicked in when i got to start being behind the scenes and i kind of knew what i wanted to do at that point i'm like djing was djing for me was money so i can go to school and do whatever i need to do it was never it was never a career thing for me even though it kind of ended up being a career thing for me mm-hmm. like a it, it 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 was a profitable hobby let's just mm-hmm. put it that way like hobbies are usually expensive mm-hmm. but it was a profitable hobby for me and then um i fell in love with with being in the studio engineering especially being on the boards and then because i was part of, like i said i was part of the av club so i was already setting stuff up so I started out doing live gigs for like like these rappers. I'm like, hey man, don't worry about it. I got you. I'll set up the DJ gig and then I'll do the front of house for you because I was doing it anyways. So you did the mixing as well. Yeah, the front of house. Yeah, I yeah, was yeah. like, you know, DJing. When they come on, I'll go in the front and you know set their mics up and do whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So started small, got bigger and bigger. Started doing bands and then starting festivals, and um, just progressed to you know. Then I'm like, you know, I want to, I want to. I started liking this, but I want to be in the studio on the big boards, right? So then I, I uh, basically tried to get an apprenticeship with all these studios. And then I ended up working with um, Len at Fiasco Brothers. Len is like our Pete Ware, you know? He's our Tom Lowry. Like he, Jazzy, Gumbel, he, you name it. So Sangtar did his apprenticeship there too at the same time with me. Wow. So that's how I know them. So, um so I worked in that studio for quite a bit of time, you know, tape runner when we recorded tape. I've recorded everybody in there. You name it. I've. I've so is that where you got your? Ever. So is that where you got your studio experience and you, you know, your mixing my, side? My, my real studio experience yeah. was there, like wow. recording the tape. Yeah. 
Wow. So um, that was cool. And I just fell in love with that process of being behind the boards and recording vocals and then doing that. And then from there, <clears throat> um, getting that experience, I ended up going to um, a bigger studio owned by, it's now it's owned by Brian Adams. It's called The Warehouse. Really? Wow. Sorry, man. Greenhouse. Greenhouse Warehouse. Anyways, one of them. I've, I've worked on them both. And um, at that time, um, David Foster was in there. He had the whole studio booked for like three months. He was doing, he was doing Celine Dion, and he was doing some stuff for um, Christina Aguilera. So That's I crazy. learned lots. Just I didn't do nothing. I was just in there, you know, ran a chord maybe. But the sh the stuff I learned at that place, like I'm talking from real producers, you know what I mean? Like, you know, pitch and vocals, and you know how to right like yeah. telling singers and you know that reminds yeah, you of yeah. uh of when i did, did, did i tell you i went to real world studios yeah yeah i went to real world studios here yeah. and i saw the place when Nusuf Fateli khan recorded yeah. uh, biggest artist any any every artist is recorded there beyonce yeah. they've all recorded there yeah it sounds like that kind of vibe yeah it was man it was like i it was never the it was i was never a I'm not a star studded guy. Like if like, you know what I mean? I was never like, Oh my God, like Celine Dion. It was never, it, I've never been like that. Cause I, I still think they're human beings. Like, mm. you know, they're obviously superstars, but I never think of them that way. I'm just like, she's come wow. back now. Right? She's come, she come back the other day. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. She was on the Olympics. So for me, it was just, it was, it was good. It was like, I was that fly on the wall, bro. I was like learning experience. And then, um, you know, but for me, I still want to stay in the urban scene. So I kind of used the experience to, you know, hook up with all these rappers and stuff and did stuff. And then we, I tried the whole, I tried, it's funny. I tried the whole like rapping thing too, with a buddy of mine, Alpha. We were, so my name's Reminisce. Our group was called Reminisce, right? And then um, we never really recorded anything, but we did shows in like schools and stuff. And then he ended up moving somewhere else to the States or something. So then, so I kept the name for myself. But um, we, right? So if, if we're gonna yeah. go anywhere, it'd been with him. I no one's gonna yeah. book me. Yeah. Right. So that kind of ended, and then I was in the studio working on stuff for uh, with Sukpal Suk, right? So when he came from India, he was in the studio doing stuff, and he was doing mixtapes at the time, like Boom Blasters and stuff like that, and um, Kafi Kam Kita, like on some stuff, and I was like, yeah, this is this kind of cool. I, I'd love to do this, right? And at the time when I was DJing, there was a banquet hall being made, was being made by my friends. They do like tilt up construction mm -hmm. and they were going to run the hall. And their dad, who I knew was like, oh, my son wants to DJ. Can you teach him how to DJ? I go, yeah, no problem. I don't care. Right. And it was Navi, Navi Jagpal, who's still my, he's my homie. Right. We're still, yeah, we're still friends. And he, there was another guy, Mandeep. He was remember I was telling you that the brother I DJ'd yeah 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 wedding? yeah yeah so that was Mandeep and I DJ'd his brother's wedding like a few years back so we all kind of got to know each other and then Navi and Mandeep kind of became tighter than me because I was never around for like on the weekends from Wednesday to Sunday I was never around ever like because I was working at night right DJing so these guys were doing their thing and then they're like hey. I was working on some mixes and I'm like, yeah, I'm going to put out a tape. I'm like, yeah, we're doing the same thing. It's like, why don't we just get together and just put out together? I'm like, yeah, chalo kalla nea, right? Lo and behold, I didn't know that when we released that first MIB, that it would go, like, it popped. Like, I'm not saying this to exaggerate. Like, it popped to the point where, like, people were pissed. You know what I mean? Like, because we didn't know. We are just taking people's garden and just putting beats on it. We didn't know about copyrights or... Oh, whatever well i shouldn't say that i mean i did but whatever we just did it for fun right we didn't think you know we we thought we honestly we thought if this <laughs> right? that's it right that's it, yeah. right we'll get a couple of gigs out of it that's it bro i didn't know we we're gonna get calls from england and stuff i didn't know we didn't know right it was it was such a weird learning experience for us we had no idea so who'd you the get called from that? england if you don't mind me asking who'd you get called from box Movie box can talk, right? Because like <laughs> most of their producers were using hip hop beats anyway. Bro, it was crazy. I remember it's funny. I can say this story because you know, you know, Jesse's my boy, right? I remember yeah. when we picked up. So 
they were coming, B21 was coming for concert and um, they go to the promoter, they go, they want us to come pick them up. So I went to go pick up Jesse, me, Navi and uh, Mandeep. So Jesse and Buta, like, we want to sit with you and the uh, Bali, Buta, or Bali and whoever, the Tolis are going to sit with the other two. Right? So before they get in the car, my boy's like, something ain't right here, right? Something, something doesn't seem right. Like, oh, whatever. Right? So I sat in the car, Buta and Bali, like, okay, we need to talk about the songs you guys ripped off. <laughs> right? I'm like, oh, here we go. Right? It was so funny. I'm like, listen, bro. I go, I'm sorry. Right? It is what it is. Like, what do you want? They're like, okay, we want to go here because they part our music. We want to go here. We want to go talk to them. It was, it was funny. Man. We, we all came good friends. About that. Did you just sample the music? Well, yeah, I... we took, basically, I, off the first time I be, I took Dior Da Via, Yeah. The whole song, like, added some beats to it, some whatever, and it, it smashed, man. Like, it was a good song, right? We just oofed it up a bit. And then... So it had the original vocals on it? Dior yeah, Dior. it was a whole song. We just did a, like, just added on top. So they had every right to be pissed. But, but yeah. I, I don't know, because the UK was doing that anyway. Yeah, if you went to... North America was famous for that, right? For the mixtapes. Yeah. But if you if you went to, like, sort of your, your video shop, Hi-Fi, you'd find these remixes by, like, DJ Chino yeah. and this and that. That's what they were doing. They were just getting yeah. songs from India. Yeah. Basically, what you guys were doing to the UK, UK was doing to India. Yeah, so... They were doing... <laughs> Does that make sense? <laughs> It was, it was it was funny though. It was just like you know, you live and learn, right? Mm. Hey, listen, we we were never our never our intention was never to mess with someone's money. No, that was never the intention, right? So, you know, we worked it all out. It's all good. But then, you know, I remember going to England, walking in the movie box, and I thought they were gonna like kidnap me and like tie me to a chair, and like you know. It was pretty. They had their bouncers there. They had a bunch of people there, it's like myself, like seven, eight of them. I'm like, okay, <laughs> what's going on here? That's pretty funny. That's crazy. Pretty he's funny. a nice guy. The Shabidis, super nice guy, really yeah, nice guy. Yeah, he's a nice guy, isn't he? Movie box owner. I don't think he runs it anymore now. I think his son runs oh, it. Oh, they're restauranteers, I think, or something. Yeah, yeah. His son Cameron still. Yeah, Cameron runs it, doesn't he? Yeah, Cameron. Yeah, that was an experience too, man. Going to South Hall, walking to the store. Metro Music. Remember Metro Music? Rings a bell. Uh, is that South Hall, was it? South Hall, yeah. Yeah, I, 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 I'm probably not as I familiar to, with it. I had to sell my differences there as well. That was fun. Why me, bro? Why, why is it always me? You see how I... Why do I punga all the me? It's like punga <laughs> written on my face, On Twitter? Bro. You know, I'm off Twitter for a bit now. I'm not on Twitter. Thank God, bro. I need to cancel that too, man. Uh, I Twitter, man. fights all the time for no reason. It's... Not only that, it's just Twitter just started showing me like they keep showing you like videos which are totally irrelevant. I don't want to. See yeah, it. I know. But I, I just, I just uh, come off it. Thought this is a waste of time. Yeah. It's, it's gone really funny now, isn't it? Twitter. It is. It is. But yeah, uh, yeah you just getting people my... arguing. That's it. People arguing. Yeah. It's a toxic place. Yeah. I mean, that was kind of like my introduction to my introduction to Punjabi music was a weird one. I wouldn't say it was a smooth transition, but I mm -hmm. never gave up. Mm -hmm. It was good though. You know, I'm, I'm thankful, but it was, again, it comes back to UK Punjabi music. It wasn't for that. I even, I'll tell you now, I'll be honest with you. Like if we look at today. I'm not in love with the scene anymore because of stuff that's coming out. We're doing well. Don't get me wrong. Canada's doing well. I'm really happy for all the artists. There's a bunch, you know, like my homie intense and stuff that I, that I love. Mm -hmm. but in terms of for me personally maybe because of my age and where i am mm -hmm. i really fall in love with hip-hop again and kind of like punjabi music is like whatever mm. for me right now i think it's become stagnant bro it, it's yeah. basically you know what happened to the uk like yeah. yeah it's good once in a while you get but it's all this it's too much like what happens with our music right because you get a song which hits and everyone follows that formula that's it. Literally. Literally. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? And it becomes boring, which is why, you know, even the music we're doing, like, I'm not saying it's the best music in the world, but at least it's different. It is. I can say, yeah. Yeah, I do agree. you know what I mean? You know, yeah. even, if, even the track, you, you know, the one you're mixing now, the, the weekend style yeah. one. Yeah, yeah. It's yeah. different, cool, isn't it? Man. Yeah. It's totally different. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's a weird one, man. It's like, um, I just find it, you didn't really, when UK, 
and India were going head to head, you still had the differences. Mm-hmm. What I find now that stuff coming from India and stuff coming from North America now is very similar. Exactly, bro. It's just same beats, same, same formula, form, same tarja, right? Sarako same yeah, right? Which is, I look, I don't know if that's okay or not. I'm just saying for me personally, it's boring. It I'm straight up, it's boring. It's boring. So, um, but on the flip side, the hip hop scene is crazy. Hmm. Like it's huge. It's but blown hip-hop, up. But hip hop's got this thing, isn't it? Where like uh, I'm, I'm not a hip hop expert, but what yes. what what I see from the outside, they always sort of um, mix different genres in it, and they keep doing it. Do you know what I mean? Do you remember like Linkin Park track? Yeah. So look yeah. at that. That's that was from one of the best tracks ever. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. You know? So yeah, they keep it's... doing that and, and they keep evolving, which is what and and now you got the country, hip hop hip hop country, Drake and not Drake, sorry, Key other now uh, um uh you know Beyonce did one as well, country yeah, track. Yeah, yeah, Shabuzi yeah. did one now, yeah, I know. Yeah. That's a weird one, man. That's not, that ain't country music, man. That's yeah. but that's but it's real. at least they're progressing, they're trying new stuff. Yeah. Do I mean you can't knock that? I gotta give these guys. I gotta give these guys props though, because these guys are out in the streets doing these ciphers. I don't know if you've seen them. No. Like you know, it started with Jindigard where they meet in this park, or whatever, play a beat, and they're just rapping, and it took off. Like it took all over the world. Birmingham's got a cipher, Midland cipher. We got them. Toronto's got one. It's a different culture. Educate me on this on this woman. Uh, you oh, lost me. What's what the cipher? Is, oh, I'll give, yeah. Lost your camera. No, I don't, no, sorry. I don't so want what, to. Be. So basically, what it is these guys have got together? It's called a Jindigar cipher, right? Cipher is just a group of people getting together and they just rap. Mm-hmm. Just whether it's freestyle, it's almost like street old, battle, like a street rap battle. It's not really a battle. It's just body body. That they go on their rap. Achoo, achoo. Right. So there's no battling, which is fine, but. It took off like it, like I'm bro. There's like this girl rapper Jyoti, her name is. She's in a wheelchair, and she's rapping, and her flow is nuts. So, and then I've been watching it since they started, and honestly, they literally blown up. I don't know if you saw that one guy. His name is Ranja. He he blew up with one of his songs, and like like every like even Carly and Gore were talking about it, and he ended up getting mm. a record deal off a of cipher for Mass Appeal. Man. So um it's it's crazy because uh there's a lot of eyes on India right now about hip hop and rightfully yeah. so yeah because again the numbers and the streams and it's nice to see that like Punjabis are involved in that. Yeah. You know, it's still it's I think it's still like young, it's growing, it's getting there. It's quite poppy, isn't it? Yeah, the hip hop they are fighting. Yeah, yeah. Well some of it's it is, weird. you know, the, the mainstream. Very... It's, it's weird. It's, I find like a lot of these guys are still liking those '90s beats. Yeah, and then they or they're very like, I f- like it's like '90s beats, but the f- and but now I've noticed like everyone likes to rap really fast. Yeah. So which is, you know, it's you know it's it's weird. Like it's like, what are you trying to do? Like, you know what I mean? So, but they're but it's but they're still doing something. They're out live in the public, their own voice. No auto tune, no nothing, whatever. Mm. You know, like no mic, and they're just, just rapping raw. It's like it's really cool to see the culture, and that take took off in Jindigard, and it's all over. Like we got one in Surrey now. There's one in Toronto. Like it's nuts. He like, said there's one in like, Birmingham as well. There's one in the Midlands. Yeah, you remember Ooh. Ammo, forty seven. Uh, what was his what was his handle on Twitter? Something beats Sunny beats. Yes, yeah. Beats? Yeah, 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 him and his boys, man. Yeah, it's crazy. I gotta check it out. I'm here, I'm yeah, down. man. It's, 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 yeah, it's where did they do it? Yeah, where did they do it? I don't know. Uh, I don't know the dates, it's pretty ad hoc, but it's, um, it's cool. I, I like what they're doing because it's, it's, it's raw, you know mm. what I mean? It's not polished. <laughs> you can see you know you see talent and i'm there all I, i'll comment all the time like i'm like hey man like i'll go underneath the the, the cypher and be like hey let's work if you want to work dm me let's work and i've had a couple of rappers hit me up and we actually got a song coming out next month oh that's phenomenal dude yeah so it's cool so 
I was just gonna say it's a good segue into into your career now. So you've got your yeah. mixing. How did you get into properly into your mixing mixing bit? And then we'll talk about you as an artist. Yeah, uh, so I've I've been mixing for thirty years. Mm -hmm. But like any industry, you know, it's it is what it is, bro. It's it's racist at the end of the day. You know what I mean? So What do you mean? Um, just you know, hip hop is predominantly black culture yeah. so getting in breaking in that as a brown guy it's next to impossible right whether it's rapping or in the in the background scenes well, kinda gotta, shame, you kind of you kind of get like you got to get like initiated into it you know what i mean yeah like for example like say there's say say i'm a studio owner and say wherever memphis and garley happen to be the only people in the area and i'm there in my studio i'm gonna pop with them mm -hmm. you see what i'm saying like kind of like it's like being in a gang right you're kind of like initiated into the, yeah. the process well i live in surrey whatever vancouver there's not that many garlic here no so anything i do is kind of like you know from here and there or you know so stuff is sent to me so i'm not i'm not like a known guy in that in that culture mm -hmm. right so a lot of stuff i do is kind of like for other engineers like okay you're gonna do this small piece of it send it back to me you can do this small piece of it send it back to me but no, not that yet at the end of the day, which is fine. I'm totally cool with yeah. it, bro. You know what I mean? So, um, you, so you're a ghost engineer? Ghost engineer, pretty well. Yeah, it's just yeah, if you're going to call it that, I'm just, but, just the, yeah. that. but the studio gets the name at the end of the day. Yeah. And that, that's fine, right? So I don't get no royalties, no nothing, nothing yeah. like that, which is fine, right? But professionally here in the city, I'm very fortunate. I got a pretty good name for what I do. Mm -hmm. So, like, I'm in the enough mm. enough to the point now where you know i i feel comfortable i can turn stuff away now mm. so just because uh you know i'm getting older bro like i want to enjoy life now too you know mm. you've seen me i work dumb hours so <laughs> um now it's like you know i want to enjoy life and now mixing and stuff i got time now you know my girls are older and i just had this bug to kind of like fulfill some dreams that i've always had so mm -hmm. kind of gone into sort of the artist side of things which is i hate it i can't stand it bro. i don't know how you, i don't know how you collect artists do it man <laughs> absolutely hate it you gotta be thick-skinned in it it's not just that man it's just the work like i've never been a guy who wants to be in the face like i don't want to be in the videos nothing mm -hmm. you know what i mean it's just it's just weird i don't know how long i'm gonna last but it's been fun though because now I've kind of transitioned from making, like going back to making some music, yeah. which has been kind of nice. I'm on the West Coast. You know, obviously I'm a big West Coast hip hop fan. So my my sound, my aura, my origin is all West Coast. I want to stay true to that. That's kind of like what I, I don't want to intimidate anyone. I want to, I want to stay close to my roots. So mm -hmm. that's kind of like what we're doing. But it's been nice, man, because, you know, you meet friends over the, over, you know, over the course of time and, you see who your friends are when you want to do some things. You know what I mean? Yeah, you were saying. Like, yeah, I don't know like, whether you want to talk about that. You like. know, like I, I it's funny because you realize how how fickle the industry is and how jealous people are yeah. over dumb shit. You know, like for example, like I'll give you, like I message a bunch of folks that I know. I'm like, hey man, I want to do a record. You know, let me, you know, will you will you help me out? Will you do something on it? And out of the ten. You know, let's just say, I'm just saying, it's not what I've been saying in general. Out of the 10, three basically didn't respond. Seven left. Out of the seven, you know, four like, nah, right? Whatever, for whatever reason. Out of three, sure, no problem. Send them the beats. Out of three, two never sent anything back. One guy, next day, delivered vocals. Let's do it. Hmm. So that so i did a record with uh, my buddy big jazz called kill shot mm -hmm. yeah yeah and, uh, I remember. yeah and it was just it was right away next day he had the vocals to be done a guy who i don't know that well compared to like some other my friends i send him the beat he's like let's do it man you go i I go are you okay with me like rapping on there he's like yeah i don't care i go and i go as long as you co-sign it right i'll send it back to you let me know because yeah i know you sound fine right i was so bro i i like i did my part and i he did his part and I felt so dumb. I'm like, dude, I can't put this out. Like, I sound like a like mm -hmm. an idiot, right? So I redid my part multiple times, and it just got worse and worse. 
because I was too because like, I'm listening to him self conscious. Yeah, he's like, no, bro. He's like, just go back to here and just do this, and you're fine, right? He goes like, I know where you're coming from. Like, yeah, I do this all the time, but I'm telling you as a as an artist, you're good, right? So then he kind of gave me that whole slot. Mm. So I put it out and I felt good. Like, but I got hated on. It was, you know, that's natural. What the horn on horn I know, right? I didn't really care mm. because I had nothing to lose, right? I'm not here for accolades or streams. Mm. It's just, it's just for fun, bro. Like I've got all this energy inside me of creativity that I want to do out. Like I love, like I said, I love, I love Punjabi music mm -hmm. and I love gangster rap. So I want to do, put the two together. Mm -hmm. So to do it right, because to me, to my ears, because I hear stuff and I don't like it. It's like totally out of pocket, right? So like that lot, that the record I did, I took like, I took a, you know, give the with Shakti sample, chopped it because I love that song. And I put it to like a beat that I love. Do you know what I mean? So I got the best of both worlds for myself. Mm -hmm. And Jazz is like, yo, this is hot. Like, let's do this. Like, this is, you know, and he, he's like, no problem. And it came out good. For us, mm. right? Regardless of what the public thinks, right? I can hand on heart say it's authentic. Like it's what hip hop should to me should sound like. So mm -hmm. that kind of gave me the, the bug now. Now my goal is to release a new song at the end of the month, every month. Mm -hmm. That's my goal. What what was the um like I know you've done vocals before. Yeah. What was it like? Did you did you did you have to rehearse the vocals? What hand if you if oh, yes, yeah. how did so, you do it? So people don't know this, but I was, I learned like, like Kirtan and stuff like the Gurdwara. Really? Wow. And, yeah. And the, and the, the Kirtan and the Gurdwara was, there's another guy there who like, he's known as Pamba Canadian, right? Who, in my opinion, is one of the best singers in North America that no one's ever heard. Really? Wow. So, I think on this, you Pamba Canadian, yeah. right? They, he used to live where I used to live. He used to live basically just down the road from me. And I used to beg him. I like, met. You know, my new Sakao going new, a little bit. I used to beg him, beg him, beg him. He's just, he's a roofer, right? So he's always busy. And then uh, he's like, okay. Then one day he's like, come on Sunday, do Kirtan with me. Right? He goes, you're just going to watch. I go, no problem. Right? And I sat there and just watched him, watched him for months. Come in. Then he started, like, I got the books here somewhere. He's like, okay. I, uh, you know, Sade, this, that. And he was like, showing me all this. He goes, okay, now do it on the, on the Baja, right? So I learned, um, I learned Suram from him, not like full rags per se. Yeah. Because I just ended up, we just, you know, family life takes over and he was just too busy. But I learned vocal control from him, which is really nice. Which is it's almost like, we can have the d debate about the stads and like vocal coaches. Cause yeah. we all went through, remember that whole argument we went on Twitter? I don't know if you remember that, like everyone got involved in that one, but you know, like I think Jesse was saying, like you know, vocal coaches. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. So okay. it's whatever, right? Out of you know, it's it's two different worlds, and I I said to my Gopaji, I love you, but I don't want to sound like you, mm. right? I go, you need to you need to show me how to me to sound like. He goes, I don't know how to do that. He goes, right? When Jamaasa calling out the new, you're gonna end up singing like me. He goes, but he goes, just practice these rogs the way you would normally do it. Mm -hmm. Like he, you know what I mean? So it was good. Um, and then there's another stodgy that I went to, uh, Baba Neem Singh, but he, um, he, unfortunately he passed away. Um, I, I learned from him too a little bit and then just life took over, bro. I just, you know, I did a few songs and that just, there was no, I wasn't looking for encouragement, you know what I mean? But just, it's just nothing, I guess nothing popped. I'm, mm. I'm a man of action, right? Like, I've got three or four things going on. If I'm focusing on something and this one's making me money, like I'm going to go towards that, you know what I mean? Where I can focus mm. my energy, where there's a return. Mm -hmm. So I did the artist thing and uh, hey, listen, we, we toured with Imran Khan, right? Well, so it was kind of cool. We went on across Canada. We did show, bro, we even went to India, did a show, right? It's pretty nuts, but it's just, I was getting better results somewhere else. So I'm just like, it's all good. Right. I wasn't, you know, and then I still kept practicing this and that. And then back in 2010 or 11, we had a flood in the basement. 
Mm-hmm. Sarakosh got flooded. We had like two feet of water in my baja, everything. So since then, I never really got one back. Like I was, I see your harmonium there, and I'm jealous, bro. Yeah, I want to get one, mm-hmm. but just time ni milia, bro. Like John Nuja, you know, go to my jija ji. He's a like he a, he's a pradana gurdwara. He played he played tabla right. So he played tabla with bro. He played tabla with Nasir Fateh Khan when he came to Vancouver for first time. Crazy. That's how good this guy is. So he's like, you know, I just have that time. Just, you know what I mean? Just so. That's um, really interesting, though, the fact that you've, you've, see, I would never have known that. Yeah. So, and I, the fact that you've got that background in, in, in things, that's, that, that's, that's, uh, admirable. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, you know what? I'm glad I did it because I, I feel sorry for artists that record with me because I give them the, like, I make them sing, bro. Like, that's how I was taught, you know. Like, I, I bro, I've been in studios where producers like, no, nah, man, like, go home. Mm-hmm. Like, you're wasting my time. Like, really? I'm talking like big names, yeah. Like, I'm talking big artists are like, go home. You're not, a, you can't do it today. Hmm. Like big artists. Well, you like, told the artists. The producer will be good to the artist. Go like, just go home. You're not, you're, you, you're not yeah. feeling it today. Yeah. Like these are these are big Grammy awarding artists. You're like, holy shit, yeah. what just happened here, right? Yeah. But you know, like. Day Honda, bro. That you can't. You're not a singer 24 hours a day. Yeah, yeah. You're, you're gonna wake up one day and you be like, oh my god, whatever, right? Yeah, like, right. But when when you know when you have a studio booked, you know, as a small artist, you got four hours. Mm-hmm. My goal is to make magic happen, mm. right? And because we only have that four hours, you're paying good money, so we gotta make shit happen. Otherwise, this is not a waste of time. And that's why I think. UK Punjabi music, even India at the time when they were in the studios paying for studio time, y'all created magic, man, because you had a certain type of window mm. to get stuff done, right? So you have to go in there and get it right. Mm-hmm. That part of the artistry is what we're missing because you can just record from home. I'm not saying you know you're at fault of this or anything. It's just when you're at home, you can record whenever you want, take your time, mm. four hours, five hours, come back the next day, and it's all good. But I can tell you as an engineer. When I get sessions come over, I can tell when the vocal take like the vocal takes are different. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Because you know you may have recorded it here, and then the next day you came back to do punch-ins or whatever. I can hear it because mm-hmm. I've recorded a thousand vocals in my lifetime, mm-hmm. right? But as an engineer, my goal is to make sure that you're consistent all the way through. Mm-hmm. Just little things like you could be singing there and you drop your shoulders a bit, just a touch. Now your vocals are going to change. Little mm-hmm. things like that. You'd be surprised. I'll be like, hey, man, straighten, your, straighten yourself up. They'll mm-hmm. think like, what are you talking about? Just just straighten yourself up. Mm-hmm. Like, even right? the vocal, go- even, even the song we're doing now, you know, the one I sent you. Yeah. Man, yeah. like that. that's a prime example of that. You know, you're not on it every day. And, you know, you, I, I, I recorded it. Everything sounded fine to me. And look, the, 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 uh, they went back to it thinking, man, it doesn't sound fine. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, it's, yeah, uh, it sucks though, bro. Like, because... You know, I I don't want to I don't want to do that to artists, right? I don't want to sit yeah. there, but it's my like at the end of the day, you got to put out the best music possible, right? Because yeah. you know what I mean, and it, and bro, everyone's at fault from 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 you to the guy mixing the song. It's my jimawari too mm-hmm. to make sure that I you know that you know what I hear, whether it's an artistic decision. Mm-hmm. That's your call at the end of the day. Mm-hmm. But it's still my responsibility. Like, hey, Raj, look, this part here, I don't know, man. Like, is this how you wanted it? Yeah. You may have been like, oh, shit, I didn't realize that, right? Because mm-hmm. you're you're focused on singing. You don't hear what I hear. Yeah. And and I think it comes down, back down <laughs> to that thing, what you said. People are starting doing it from home now. Yes, there's positive sides of that, but there's also negatives. Like when you were an engineer, yeah. say I was with you in person, you'll be able to correct me right then. You'll hear things that yeah. I can't hear. Yeah, you know what I mean. Whereas, but the the, the positive side of it is that, that I can record at any time. Yeah, but yeah, but good. one thing I would say when I we used to go in a the studio, there'll be more theory. Do you know what I mean? Hundred percent. And that's why now you know that vocal that we're doing now. I'm forget this. I got to go back to, back to the drawing board. Do my theory as if I'm going to as yeah. uh, recording in the studio. I yeah. should know the song inside out before even even come to the mic. Yeah. 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 You'll find you'll just you'll just feel better. 
nothing's that clear. So, do you know what I mean? It's been an hour and a, over an hour and a half. We didn't even get to the thick of it, have we? Like no, that. it's been over an hour and a half. Uh, so, um, yeah, and it's half eleven here in the in the night, and I've got to do baby sorry, <laughs> baby shift in the night. <laughs> yeah, sorry, bro. No, don't be. I want to carry on. To be fair. But, uh, uh, yeah, yeah, uh, we, yeah. can, we can continue. We can do a part two. But uh, yeah, um, so I normally end the, the podcast uh, uh, just asking, uh, my yep. whole purpose of this podcast is in the pursuit of musical excellence. So what advice would you give me? Would you give listeners um, to uh, get become excellent in music? <laughs> Whether it's a DJ or singing um, or producing or because I know you do all of it. Um a tough one bro because um i think if you're it depends where you are at your stage right like if you're if you're if you're start starting out and you want to sing you need to find a couple of mentors and just listen Mm -hmm. the biggest problem i find with music industry no one wants to listen anymore Mm -hmm. like i listen to music every day every day Mm mm-hmm Every day for the last, since music is, I've heard music in my life. I listen to music. I'm listening for fashion. I'm listening for how things are said. I'm listening for language. I'm listening to, you get what I'm saying? I'm listening mm-hmm. to mixes. How is, what's the new sound? Is it too bright? Do not, right? Like I tell everybody, especially singers, like they'll laugh, bro, they'll laugh at me. All these Punjabi singers are probably, you may go on, go on, what should I do? I'm like, go, go, go download uh, the, um, um, what's his name? Uh, Michael Bublé Christmas album. I mm-hmm. listen to it over and over again. And they look at me like you're you're too pagalian. Yeah. I go just go listen to him. I go if you want to learn how to sing, go listen to that. Yeah. Listen to how he sings. Mm. Right. If if you don't want to get in the start, you need to find someone and listen to how they sing. Listen to how they say the words. Listen to the breaths. Right. Mm. Um. And if you want to make beats, pick an instrument and learn it. Simple. Mm. I always say piano or guitar you gotta you gotta learn you gotta learn you can't run before you walk right mm. i think uh, i find and this is a fact because i'm in like these these zoom meetings with like you know label owners like you know and all this stuff we have masterminds it's a fact that music over time recently has degraded the quality because there's no more gatekeepers there's no more a&rs there's no more mm-hmm. ARs, yep, you know yep. development Agreed. No one's learning an instrument. You know what I'm saying? So I think if you want if you want to excel at what you do, I think you need to, you know, like how many, I don't know how many singers that I know that want to sing that don't even own a mic. Hmm. That that makes no sense to me. If you want to sing, you should at least own a mic. <laughs> right? Yeah. So it's just, it, it's honestly come like I think we've complicated too much. It comes down to basics. Just just pick it up and do it. You'll get you'll get good over time, mm. right? But at the same time, you need you need to you don't. I'm not saying you compare yourself to someone, but you you need to sort of set a level of where you want to be, uh, you know, quality wise. You know what I mean? Like you, go, I know you go to Nostad, so you 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 got someone to. So I want to keep you in feedback check. from you. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Right. So that's the problem now is like, we got so much stuff going unchecked. And if you get checked, like someone like, like, bro, I try to check people all the time. Not because I'm hating because I'm like, you know, I've done it my whole career, bro. I've been in studios where, like I said, like big artists are crying in the, in the washroom because the guy's like, bro, you can't sing your shit. India, we, right. It, Tewi. Crazy. Right. So you gotta like you just gotta man up and just you know woman up and just just get it done, mm. right? Like we're we're coming from some of the greatest music eras ever in history, whether it's Punjabi music, country mm. music, hip hop, and R and B. So you've got plenty of stuff to look at behind you. Mm. Right? So my my suggestion is like, you know, podcasts like this. You know, the, all the artists that you've picked, like some of them are heavy hitters. You know, I'm hoping that these kids are going, okay, you know, and that's the thing, like, it, it, our Jim and used to inspire these kids somehow mm. to do these things, right? Like, like, I don't want to come across as a hater, which I don't know why I get tagged with that, but 
you know, the, my, my, my thing is never to hate. My thing is I want, like, to me, if a young kid can make a career out of music, a career out of music is, you know, I've done my part. Like, if it was one little thing that I said, like, hey, bro, I popped because you said X, Y, Z. Look at me now. Like, you know what I mean? That'd be the most, most amazing thing. Mm. You know what I mean? But it's it's a different world now. And the other thing, too, unfortunately, is get your socials up. Mm. You got to work on your social content. You got to get the likes. 100%, bro. bro. It's sad, but it is what it is. Yeah, 100%. I mean, I'm uh, I'm digressing. That that was that excellent, by the way. That was um, yeah. uh, 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 great for the podcast and and for myself as well. Um, I, I remember talking to a friend of ours, and he was saying, "Oh, I'm in, um, uh, you know, is a bit strict when it, when when comes when he gives feedback and stuff." And uh, I thought, really? So I don't get that vibe from you at all. I mean, I've never got that vibe from me. I've never ever got that vibe from you, bro. I... Why, here, here's the thing, and I and I learned this. I've been very fortunate. Like, I I was raised in an environment where I was raised by. Because let's be real, the music industry it's a dirty business. It's all mm. it's like I don't know about how I was in the UK. Well, I know how I was in the UK. Mm-hmm. People that own the clubs, these nightclubs and shit like that, they're all hustlers, bro. Like it's a dirty business. They're all like whatever, mobsters, gangsters, whatever you want to call them. So I was raised in an environment where I learned a different type of entrepreneurship where you had to be really good at what you do. You had to be smart at what you do, Mm. right? And the advice I got is, you know, if you want to slowly kill someone, you give them the wrong advice and over time they'll just implode. Mm. That's one thing I learned. I always remember that. So for me, if I'm saying something to you, it's not to kill your career. It's, It's to make sure that, you know, you kill like you kill somebody else's career because you're better than them. Mm. that's always been my thing you know if i'm saying to you raj like you know i wouldn't ever say your vocals suck i'd be like hey bro look this portion here is like blah 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 like you know we've had these conversations yeah of course we have yeah but yeah i've had these conversations with like everybody like anyway you know what i mean like bro if a song sucks it sucks can we agree yeah absolutely yeah so well, then why the hell are we promoting it mm. it doesn't help the industry Mm. Like it makes no sense to me. I'm not listen. I'm not saying I'm no Nasser Tafatari Khan. I've never said that mm. ever, right? But you know, I got ears. You know, I know. You know, if it fits within the D, like you know, a song's a song. But if something is really bad, like totally bis sort or whatever, and you got all these people bigging it up, or someone's completely stolen something, and all these big artists are bigging this up, it, how is that helping the industry? Because if that happened in like the hip hop world or the Goro world, buddy, they'd get they'd get eaten up alive. Lawsuits, this and that, defamation. Mm. Culturally, we just we're just very like egalitarian where we're trying to push everybody up. Where sometimes it doesn't make sense. Mm. You know what I mean? Like I've seen it Punjab now. Like I don't know if you seen my you're on my Instagram. You see me post this one guy. I don't know what his name is, but he can't sing at all. Literally, and these guys are giving him stages, some Sonu Atiyawali or something. I don't know what his name is. But, bro, he's like, I don't know why, they, but they're putting him on stage and like, but, you know, he's getting views and clicks and what? I don't, I, don't, I don't get it. There's that guy called, um, have you seen him? Jahat Fateli Khan. That guy's OG, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, he's, he's, I'm saying he's he, booked around the world. He got 21. His video, about the 21 million views on on uh, YouTube. But why? You see what I'm saying? Ah, <laughs> it makes no sense. It makes no sense. He's my, what we need to do, I'm all right. We need to do parody videos instead. Parody singing instead of I will blow well, up. Honestly, like I, I it it just it is what it is, bro. But it, it's disheartening at the same time yeah. because it's like why 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 is that big? Yeah, it makes no sense. And watch, you'll probably get a record deal for all we know. Warner is gonna come along like, oh yeah, this guy's got twenty million views. He got four hundred thousand, and they're gonna sign this guy. Like if, you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> Like, like at that point, you might as well just quit. 
crazy, bro. Like it's done. Oh man. Crazy. Whatever. Anyway, we're almost at two hours, so. Uh, uh, oh, shit. Sorry, bro. I think That's we'll do. Crazy. I think we'll do a part two. You know, but but you know what I like. Yeah. I mean, I think I've I've heard some of your podcasts before. Great podcasts, but I think we've we've got a different side of you here in this podcast which i'm really grateful oh, for you you know your history and the technical side of it as well which is what what it's about and uh so i really appreciate uh you you coming on and um we're going to carry on working together anyway you've got two more yeah, bro. anyway so uh uh look out for that is there any 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 projects you want to mention uh, that that you're doing um guys look out for no, we're good. just uh you know look out for the stuff that rod is going to put out uh you know, I got the honor, privilege of mixing and mastering that. I'm producing it as well. So the the, the yeah. best oh, one, yeah, uh, you, yeah you and Raymond did it. Yeah, yeah Raymond cool. did a yeah. fantastic job, man. Um, that and just you know, I just like I said, every you know, following on my socials, I'll be putting out music. You know, at the last last Friday of every month, it's all urban hip hop based stuff. My first love. Um, I've been very fortunate that I got to work with some young Punjabi rappers from, from all over. So for me, it's, it's just making music that I love doing, bro. Honestly, mm. that's it. And it's, and to prove, and you know, cause we talk about metrics all the time. Yep. Like at my age, what I'm doing, I'm slowly, steadily growing and I've got the receipts to prove it. Yep. So if, and, and this is what I say to everybody, like, that I, you and I know some of the most talented people in the world, mm -hmm. right? That haven't done anything for whatever reason, right? And they were to put out a record now, they would probably do better than so many of us. But I've I've got proof in the pudding with what I have done consistently that if I could do it at my age, mm -hmm. you know, that someone that's got you know, real talent and like real backing that you could do like the, 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 it's unlimited, the possibility that someone can do. And that was the whole purpose of this year is to put music out to prove a theory that if you consistently put stuff out, you consistently do your socials. Like I'm not getting millions of views. That's not the point, but I'm getting a thousand streams per song. I'm you're getting 10,000 views per video. Yeah. So, you're growing. I mean, there's a, there's a there's a book I've uh, I've read called "Talent Is Overrated." Have you okay? Have you, have you heard of the book? No, no but yeah. I'll get it. Though. I love reading books. Yeah. So, "Talent Is Overrated," saying basically you could the hardworking guy would always trump the talented guy. Get that one, bro. I've I've got the audio book. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, the latest edition. Wicked book. Yeah, I've got I've got the audio book of that. So I've got the, yeah. yeah. But "Talent Is Overrated" is basically just saying that hard work will always trump. Uh, a talent. You 100%. can be as talented as you want, but if you're not working hard, it doesn't matter. <laughs> yeah, hundred percent. All right, that's probably if if you want to get anything out of this podcast, it's what Rod said. Talent beats hard work all day, every day. Oh, other way, other way. Hard work beats talent. <laughs> what did I say? Sorry, my bad. Yeah. Reverse that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but it's funny you say that because it's true though. Talent, talent is one of those things where you're gonna get noticed for yeah. sure, right? Tons, of, but it's that hard work that's going to put you over the edge. Absolutely, yeah. All day, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. And hey, bro, peace out. I'm just going to uh, say the last bits for the podcast. So, guys, that was uh, DJ Reminis, uh Aman, and make sure you follow him on, on all his socials and leave a review for uh, the podcast as well. And uh, leave a comment and share. There's going to be if you, if you're watching this as a snippet, um, you probably won't be, but. <laughs> anyway uh, if you're watching this a snippet uh, just make sure you share um, share the podcast and I'm sure Amun's friends would, will uh, share it as well and give, give it a listen and God bless you all and peace out I'm going to stop this podcast and just catch up with Amun afterwards Amun thank you so much bro